idea for this stream at least is to okay a pop wants to call me but i have to keep it quiet Sorry guys, I'm just gonna talk to Apop for a second. Oh, there he is. Okay. He says be quiet, I'll be quiet. No questions asked. But yeah, I will call him. It will make it easier to uh, kind of identify what the Zerg is doing and any questions he might have. Apop, obviously a master's one. I can hear you, my dude. I can I'm up work, so it's all I can ram the volume up for you. There we go. Nice. All right. So you're finally making a how-to cannon. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, lots of people have asked in the past, and I never actually got around to doing it. Part of the problem is I never had any Zerg friends to just sit down. <laughs> no Zergs wanted <laughs> no to be friends. friends with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm. I would make this, but I have no friends. Well, I've sat down for like Literally 10 hours, I would just cannon rush. I did it to Demaga, I did it to Uko. Uko more than anyone, I think, of cannon rush. So I, I have those videos, but never like a step-by-step -step kind of thing. Um, so yeah, the idea behind this kind of... I don't know if I'll make it a series or one video, but the whole point will be to kind of do it on a very basic level for the lower level players. And then I'll do, at, either at the end of this stream or in another stream, I will go over what the advanced kind of techniques and map specific things are because cannon rushing is actually very mm. map specific um and then also okay. there's how to play against all sorts of different pool timings that the zerg can do how to identify that it's actually quite annoying if you want to actually get really good and get to like a top gm kind of mmr then you're going to have to learn like how much health the hatcheries are supposed to have when your different probe scout timings arrive because you can do a forge first one and then it gets there at a certain time so 500 hp for example is the standard timing on a probe scout how much hp the hatch should have off a 17 or 16 hatch and then 850 is what it is on the gate forge so there's like stuff like that that you need to pay attention to mm. but um i think overall uh it needs to be a very simple one going into a more complicated one for people that actually want that. But for the diamond and below players, I think we won't focus too much on that kind of stuff. Are you ready, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you? I was going to ask, do you want me to do anything in particular or just... Uh, so please just open 17 hatch and then go into... 17 hatch. Or 16. If you if you do 16 hatch, you usually then do that. But I know that's... Yeah, 16 standards. So. Okay. I'll do that if that's fine. Yeah. All right. Um, no particular defense, right? Just, uh, just go into Ravages because that's the most common and I think still the strongest, to be honest, uh, response. There's about three main responses that I think you can do, and um, Ravages is the best one. So the Zergs will probably be doing that. So I sent my second probe out after Chrono Boosting. Uh, the Chrono Boost is actually map specific, but you can do it every game, it doesn't matter too much. Um, so the first probe up to, well, the second probe out of the Nexus goes across the map after the pylon is built. Then your 15th probe goes and builds the forge. It's the one that, like, you can just see the pylon is finishing, so you know that a probe should be heading on over to that pylon to build the forge. And then you send that, that guy across. It's a very easy, simple start. So as the probe comes in, it wants to see if there is a hatchery, and if there isn't one, then you need to build the pylon somewhere else. But we're going to be playing against a 16 hatch, and all you need to know is if there is a hatch, then it's a 16 hatch, right? So we can just assume that he's playing completely standard right now. He's seen he's pulled some drones. If he goes round to the other side, we need to build these two pylons here, and there's something like that on every map we can rush. You just plonk down a cannon and a gateway, and you build your first gas. So that's the basic setup. The opponent cancelled his hatchery. That's a very normal, common response. It's nothing to worry about. In fact, it's kind of good. So here, I'm going to build another cannon. This can actually get denied by a drone pool, but Zergs, it's kind of risky. And even if he gets it, it's not a big deal. So we've got an extra cannon. We want to saturate gas as soon as it's done. And we want to get the 
cyber on time. If you delay your cyber, you're going to run into all sorts of trouble. So you're basically going to wait here with this probe until the gateway is done and then plonk the cyber down as soon as possible. Because... Oh, hello. Okay. So cyber goes down. We've got money. We can build another cannon. We want to go away from the ramp. And the... Because he's going to deny everything there for free. We want to see if there's going to be a hatchery here, or if it's just a drone that's just going to cause trouble. So, notice I'm not making a second gateway here. And well, the third cannon. Three cannons is like the base level of cannons. You don't want more than that, defending. I'm not counting this cannon, because it's basically for free, it's just going to die. So, here comes the cyber. Start your first stalker. And we want some shield batteries. I actually have enough gas for the robo immediately. So we're going to plunk that down. Chrono boost the stalker. You can get this guy, it's kind of nice. Nice. So he can't run lings across the map unless. Chrono boost again. Unless, of course, he. Okay, there's a Ravager. Unless he takes a bunch of damage. So if he does run things across the map, you instantly build a cannon at the ramp. Okay, so he, he, we know he's gone Ravages now, because he's starting to buy us with Ravages. Again, perfectly, no need to panic, this is all according to plan. We're going to build extra shield batteries, because he will bleed us out if he biles us. So usually three cannons and three shield batteries is the right number. But I'm going to build a fourth one, simply because the opponent is going to drain us faster than if he did. Anything else? Lings or spines or queens. Okay, so we've got a ball prism on the way. Because that doesn't cost gas. And I'm actually going to cancel this next stalker and we're just going to wait for that prism to finish. Ooh, okay, got to be careful on the ramp. And then we're going to start immortal production. And we can take a second gas at this point. Need an extra pile. Okay, so the Prism Micro, it's up to you how well you want to do this. You don't have to do it so aggressively as I'm going to be doing here. But this is basically what you're aiming for. Keep Chrono Boosting on the Robo. You can build, probably afford another Shield Battery. You kind of just look at your resources and be like, can I afford anything else here? So we're going to put two on each gas. So if he walks down the ramp, he's going to take uh, shots from the cannons, and that's fine. It's going to be really hard for him. You want to lead with your immortal. It's going to pop the shield as soon as it's hit. So you get some value there. And you can actually dodge projectiles. So if you watch what happens with these ravages, they won't actually do damage if you pick up on time. If you bails the ramp, you need to retreat. You only go ahead when you think that you can win the fight straight up, which is not right now. We don't have any units. We have barely anything. Okay, there are spores. So you just need to be very careful. Oof! Close. And we're just going to keep spamming immortals. And micro. Nice piles. Okay. Keep building pylons, shield batteries. Okay, at this point, alright, we have a good healthy number of immortals, that's two, and cannons. So what we can do is just recall all three of these stalkers. And if the opponent wants to knight us, which is a very good response, we'll have stalkers ready to deny the knight us. We'll also have units ready just in case of... Yeah, we do want to kill that creep tumor if that's possible. Woo! Almost got the prison. Okay, so the basic principle here is Immortals beat Ravages with the War Prism and Shield Batteries. So we can just keep poking on. As long as there's not a Nidus in our main, which we've already accounted for, there should be a clear, simple path to victory here. And once uh, 7 minutes hits, we want to be thinking about taking a Nexus behind the third. Oh, I should have actually hotkeyed this properly. Ooh. The 
So we just want to make sure we don't ever take Bios to the face. That's the only way we're going to lose this game. But we did see an Overlord there. So we need to shoo that away. And now we're going to be careful about Nidus. Uh, at this point we can put a third one on each gas if we haven't already. I already did because my gas just worked out that way. But if you're still on two on each gas then you can put an extra one because we're mining out now. 7 minutes 30 and we already don't have our uh, mineral patch in the main. So we're waiting for this. We've got another pylon over here. Yeah, we actually have enough to just walk up the ramp now. Still micro, still be good at stuff. Okay, there is Muta. So that's something that I actually am not prepared for, but we can kind of reactively do all that. He won't have that many Muta. And I did expect he had a Nidus, but he's got Muta, so let's get through. So we're actually just going to go in here and trade out. You can kill the drones, kill the hatch, and kill anything. You could even go for the spire here. And now we want to recall the bulk of our probes from the main. And build some extra things. Okay, I didn't actually need to lose. I could have kept at least two more. So that would have been good. One probe is stuck, that is sad. And now we just make the thing that kills those things. Oh, I actually have these guys still. We have a shield battery that's going to be just right. There's Mutro there, so we can go over here. Mutro are just really sad against uh, shield batteries. So if you're fighting over a shield battery, then you're never going to lose that fight. I do want a shield battery here as well. So fight if it goes to harass. Just nice and relaxed. Teleport successful. Mm, could do another one of these actually. Okay, once you've got two, I think it's probably a nice number. You can just do this. Again, shield batteries are going to deny any value that the mutants have. GG! That was actually nice from Apoc. I didn't expect the Mew to switch. He seemed to still have a lot of Ravages, but at some point I was like, wait, I can just walk up the ramp. If you think that you can do that, it means that the opponent spent money elsewhere. Um, and the Muta is a good call. I usually have a Stargate faster than I did this game, so I would have Muta. I usually make Void Rays if I don't see the Muta, and then if they, I do see the Muta, then I go into Phoenixes. Because a Void Ray over a Cannon and a Shield Battery will help defend a base. Uh, and also be useful against if he just goes for a Nidus play. It's just an all-round okay unit in PvZ right now. Um, so yeah, that was a pretty good response uh, from Mr. Apoc. Let's just have a look at his opening generally. Hello everyone in chat, by the way. Sticky, happy stick. Other people, Stroya. He's finally reached level 9,000. <laughs> we have lost him forever. What are you guys chatting about? You already recorded this for YouTube, so we are watching a recording. That is not true. How am I responding to chat? Unless you are also part of the recording. Did you get the MC Smasher? It. Yeah. <laughs> I just know someone's going to call me a scammer. Alright, so there's a couple of things Abel could have done uh, a bit better. So he sees with a second overall, which by the way is very important for Zerg. It's just, it's really, really hard to hold this if your second Overlord goes straight across the map and you have no idea that you were even being cannon rushed to Zerg. So you definitely want your second Overlord. Usually what happens is it goes into the natural and then leaves, and that timing works out to see any probe that comes in, so you can be suspicious and uh, kind of have a heads up against that. But um, now he obviously sees it with the second Overlord. He's keeping it here. That's something that's quite good to do because you can see the follow-up. If there's no gateway here, for example, he could have a natural nexus and a forge in the wall and that's something you want to be playing different against that's not very good though i don't really like using a cannon rush off of a forge first to deny the hatchery and then macroing out i think that's very bad uh some zags struggle a lot with it but that's another video um but generally i think that cannon rush you don't need to worry about 
as much. It's this one that's way more way more powerful. Um, so one thing Apop does is he pulls three drones and onto the pylon. That's fine to pull three drones, but you're not going to deny this pylon unless you send like seven. So there's no real point in sending three if you're going to do what he did. You'd want to send one and try and get into where the cannon's going to go. So you know that the, the cannon spot on this map, for example, is here. And then the gateway goes there to block it off. And then you have your denial of the natural and your tech on the way. So one drone going around and forcing two pylons to be built is fantastic. And that's something every Zerg should be doing every time against a cannon rush. It's only one drone and it causes at least 50 minerals of damage. And on most maps, it causes a delay to the gateway here. He goes back of his drones, so I'm able to just build a cannon, build a gateway, and, and get along with the cannon rush, right? It's just much cheaper for me than it should be, than one drone could have made, right? And he's pulled four and didn't get that damage. So that's something that, uh, Apop, I feel like you should definitely work into your defense here. Mm. Okay, uh, the drone the drone going across the map is very good. It's very good to have one drone. So you can use the one that went to uh, deny the, or went to pressure against the wall. Um, and then send that across the map because the cannon's not going to be done. There's no threat to that drone. So having another drone on the map makes me very nervous and I have to worry about uh, a proxy hatchery and you droning that and getting uh, value whilst I'm trying to slowly push into your base. So that can be very good. Uh, and sending it into the main is also fine. It's just another option that Zerg can do because now I'm worried, oh, here we go. There's going to be a hatchery and I'm going to need a slightly different response and a slightly different way of playing than had I not. So it's fine to do this. And obviously, if you have a drone in the main, I'm going to have at least one probe following this uh, to try and delay the hatchery going down and to at least know that the hatchery has gone down. So you kind of get your money back that this one drone isn't mining, but neither is this probe. Uh, Apop, I know it's in your play generally. You don't patrol your drones like this. You'll, you'll spend like, like tons of APM. Yeah, like this shift clicking the move command to make sure that the drone doesn't die. And you will go back to it and just keep refreshing the shift clicks when actually a patrol would have done a better job here. Um, yeah, definitely. Obviously, it's like a really awkward button. It's on P for most people. So that's probably the reason why people just don't bother using the patrol. Um, but you can rebind it to something closer. I put it on M, which is at least you know possible for your fingers to reach, whereas P is really far away. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the way you did it there, you, you used lots of APM and shift clicks and stuff to dance the drone around and then you still lost it because the uh, shift clicks went uh, far enough so just like four clicks all around each corner of the base and that drone's not going to die unless i pull like 10 probes and even then i might not get it so i wouldn't take that risk it's just not something that works um and then you can gu guarantee that drone is alive uh, so that's another little thing that we did there takes notes hey space berry i hope you guys are taking notes all right so that's the drone that's a, a nice little play for zerg Having one drone out on the map, just generally, you don't need to do anything with it. You can just hide it in the corner of the map and it's going to be valuable uh, for the rest of the game because the Protoss needs to worry about that. Uh, I was the potato this game and I lost my probe that was in his main scouting. If I hadn't done that, then this probe gets to go all around the map, patrolling, again, a patrol click to every base and make sure that the Zerg doesn't have a hatchery without you knowing about it. Um, so that's just something that you need to be doing in the second probe. Uh, sometimes some people will send their second probe in up the ramp and try and gauge whether or not that there is a fast lair and that will tell them that there's a nidus and prevent that kind of play but that doesn't it's not really guaranteed for example you could have a queen and two lings and the probe dies before it sees the lair and then you don't have map vision against the drones out on the map and that's a problem in and of itself so ape up here uh, he went six on gas very quickly. You need gas. Gas is the magical resource. So he went six on gas as soon as he could. As soon as he realizes he's being cannon rushed, basically. He would have more resources had he done this early bit correctly, obviously, with this drone, uh, one drone coming around. The other three would be mining. So that would be very useful. Um, just to have a bit of extra eco, faster uh, two gases, a faster pull. Uh, but yeah, as Zerk, you just want to take your two gases and put your pull down. There's no threat to you for a really long time, and if the opponent makes a zealot, you can actually just deal with that with drones and micro, or you can just you'll have your queen and a couple of wings will do the trick. So don't need to worry about a zealot. Don't need to worry about a high ground cannon rush. Cannons can't really do anything on this map. You actually can deny the mineral patch here. You can just pull drones and deny that. So that's that's not really an issue. 
Um, but some cheeky Protoss might try high ground stuff, but that's map specific, don't worry about that for now. Um, so yeah, we're mining tons of gas, we've got a pool on the way, this is fantastic. Got the Roach Warren going down as soon as the pool is done, fantastic. Uh, don't get supply block to make an overlord if you feel like you're going to need it. Obviously once the Roach Warren is done, uh, you're going to need a lot of supply for the Roaches to come out. And you want some lava, Queen's on its way, it's going to do some injects. Yeah, this probe shouldn't die, but I'm a potato. So first few roaches, first one roach is on the way. There's no real rush for the roaches, as I say, the, the stalker is going to come out. It's not going to be able to do anything against the queen, let alone one roach. So you don't need to worry about that for now. So this is great. Uh, obviously, these three buildings are going to die for free. So as the Zerg, you just need to work on getting that. There's no way for Protoss to get reliable vision up here. I poke in to see what's going on, because I don't even know it's Ravagers yet, so that's good to know. And now, yeah, the the uh, uh, Ravager can sit here. He can actually just sit here in auto to deny everything here faster. Um, for example, this pylon should be the priority for the Biles, not the cannon. You can just sit your Ravagers here and kill the uh, cannon and gateway of auto attacks and keep biling this pylon down, because once this pylon is down, I, I can't even use this gateway. And I don't really want to repower it just for stalker production when I have immortal production. So it would be nice to just sit the Ravagers here and auto, yeah. Yeah, Apop uh, respecting it too much. He, he doesn't realize that I, there's no real way of me going up here and using that cannon. So I think definitely that's another thing we can work on here is just to uh, kill the gateway and pylon much faster. And the supply block is nice as well. It's pretty good to uh, kill the pylon as fast as you can. Because I'm worried about getting biled on the cannons, so I'm going to be building shield batteries and cannons and not pylons. I don't want to be building pylons, so killing this pylon as soon as possible is really nice. Uh, these little trades, once the prism is out, you don't really want to go down the ramp, to be honest. Like, if there's a cannon that's really far forward, you can keep biling that, but at this point, there's no real need to um, fight. Make, sh make the Protoss walk all the way up the ramp to shoot anything. Like... There's no need to take cannon shots. There's no need to buy all the cannons either. I don't think that the Zerg needs to be so aggressive. Um, and this gateway and pylon should be going down. So that's the priority, Apop, instead of uh, trying to defend your ramp. You can just pull a little bit away from the ramp and make sure I have to go in really far forward to actually get any damage done. Okay. Yeah. So what's like the... What would you say then? Because I feel like once the world systems out, it's like, oh man, if they're good enough, there just doesn't seem to be a way to win. Um, so I think the important part with this situation is to pull back as much as you can. You put the spores forward, for example, and I think that that's always going to go down for free. The spores and the, the units here, it's just where you take the fight. You don't actually need to be uh, where you are to take this fight. You can be much further back and force the prism to... The most important thing is the prism doesn't want to go too deep against the queens. Where I'm fighting, I can always get back before the prism takes hull damage. The shields will go down, then I can always fall back. So that's kind of like the, the game here. So pushing forward into the cannon battery is a big mistake here. You should, we'll try this again, but this time sit a bit more defensively. And again, this, uh, and, and try and get the gateway and, and pylon down uh, and killed much faster. Um, and then with that extra space, you'll feel like, oh, I actually have nothing to do. So uh, you can play around with the Ravagers as you're doing, that's fine. You, there's a chance the opponent loses the Prism and some Immortals and stuff. Especially if he pushes on top of the ramp and then has to retreat, there's a good chance he'll take Bile damage, uh, which is what you kind of do later on. Um, so yeah, like this is fine. You could be even further back, but that's fine. Like I have to go up the ramp and then you push away and then you can rapid fire Biles. This kind of bio play is fine. It's a bit, you know, like the opponent shouldn't lose anything um, to that, but it can work. Um, so I can't say that's wrong, but this kind of bio is really nice. It really says go home, like you're not going to get anything done here. And behind this, you've got the tech. So that's what Zerg has to do is either he goes Nidus or he goes Spire, or with the drone that you have out at the start of the game, you've got another hatchery and you're just macroing up that hatchery and getting right, units out yeah. on that. So there's kind of three things you can do, but I think anything other than Spire, Nidus, or Proxy Hatchery, uh, I'm mostly talking about Lurkers, Infesta, Hydra, uh, what else could you possibly do? Really fast Vipers. Yes, um, swarm Host. Swarm Host. Actually, Swarm Host is one that I think is fine yeah. um, against Forge First. Swarm Host is a pretty good one. 
Uh, but the, the, the basic principle behind this kind of stage is you're holding on with Ravages and you're getting another tech out. So your tech is Spire, which is much harder to hold with, even though you do a great job. It's much harder to hold of this just because um, you're running out of Ravages now. And I, I, exactly at the point that the Spire is about to finish, I should be coming in. I could probably have come in there and killed everything. Yeah, and then it's kind of like a weird base trade situation. Um, cool. Yeah, so Spire is fine. I'm not saying it's wrong. Uh, it's just you need to understand that it's a little bit harder to hold with. Um, sure. Yeah, but overall, definitely one drone to force the two pylons to wall in the cannon and uh, try and keep your drone alive. Yeah. Those are two big things. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's it's like it's like a really simple situation to say, oh, okay, it's immortals in a prism against ravages. But there's lots of tiny things that make a big difference. Um, mm -hmm. So if I hadn't recalled the stalkers and you made a nidus instead of the spire, then the uh, nidus would get up and I'll lose my mineral. And then I have to try and win with just whatever immortals I have left and a prism. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a completely different situation. Okay, so I'm teaching you guys to chrono boost every time. Okay, so first probe goes to a mineral patch. Second probe goes to the ramp. Then we cut production to build this pylon. Then we resume production to continue probes. I guess that's what resume production is. <laughs> and then this 15th probe goes out to the ramp. That's the porch. Again, it's very important to send your probe correctly into the natural. So on this map, for example, if he doesn't have a hatchery here when I arrive, I want to build a pylon here. And then I got somewhere further away than a 12 pool to deal with um, the threat of early links. So again, you build your first pylon, and then you're going to... You, you need to have it very clear in your head. Wait, like, this is a crucial part of the game. So, drone comes. Oh my god. Hey, but you're gonna have to leave. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that would have been a good. That would have been a GG if you pulled probes, and then uh, and got in there. Then I basically shouldn't win from that. So that's the other thing about sending the uh, one drone across. I'm gonna blame that on ping, a hundred percent. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. All right. So I think we saw a drone leave. So that's just good to know. And then we build this greedy cannon. And you can see we're actually just behind in minerals compared to where we were before. Like the gas is already done. Compared to like last game it would have already been done. And we're gonna cut at 16 as well. I'm gonna build a second cannon. That's such an awkward map for this actually. We've got a probe waiting here because we do not want to delay the side. Yeah, that's absolutely crucial, is do not delay the side. So same thing as last game, we want another pylon because this one's going to die. And we want to get this uh, probe out there as soon as we see a queen or links. We can see, okay, that's a roach warren. And then this guy goes and patrols around the map. We don't want to make any more probes, 16 on minerals is fine. Last game I made more just because uh, I didn't send the drone at the start and I felt comfortable to just uh, take it from there. So Stalker, Chrono Boost, Shield Batteries. I'm going to build away from all of this and up towards the choke of the base. Okay, we see an extra hatchery. That's good. It's too late to cannon rush that. That is something you can do. You can just cannon it, but it's way too late to do that now. If we do that, then he can make lings and deny the cannons before uh, they finish. In any case, it would just be really expensive, so it'll be. it's not really worth it. We go over here and we try and see, okay, there's a Ravager. That's great. Keep chrono boosting and now we want to build the robo have got this badly yes i have okay so i'm going to go and try and get some vision up here a pop can just pull away to the left he wanted to run the other way there um, and now i'm going to take my second guess run towards the pool that queen doesn't need to be there Okay, so I'm going to stop with the gateway production now, which is very awkward because I don't have much stuff. So I might build an extra cannon, for example. Uh, no, actually good to build it, so I won't do that. <laughs> There it is. 
We just want some pot shots on the Ravagers because it makes them squishier. Which is great. Want two on this guess and take one for that guess. I guess quick to yag. Okay, first Immortal, not Prism, because we have the gas we cut um, production. So it's slightly different from the last game. You just need to use your head a little bit, right? Second Robo will go down. Oh yeah, and we need to build a cannon here because he's got another base. So he could make links or even Ravages. See, that's a very scary number of uh, Ravages already. So we want another cannon here. Now, I can't really poke up, because he should be sat near the ramp, and he could see me walk up there and then take some shots at me. Okay, so like, like that. Like, I, we can't hang too much there. Okay, our second pylon, or our next pylon, rather, will be here, because he's got another base. So, if we don't build another pylon here, and he comes in with Ravages and denies this, then we're going to lose power of this cannon, and then the cannon will die, and that's no good. So, that's something we need to keep in mind. Prism's about to be done, and that's when we start the mighty juggle. Bit low on gas. Might put an extra one on gas quickly. We're going to start this game. Lead with the Immortal. Okay, that's much better. Oh my goodness, I lost a sword. So, like, you can see it's much different now. Okay, we can actually go and do this. Actually, losing that stalk is really big, because if I want to defend a Nidus now, I'm going to have to recall an immortal instead of two stalkers because I don't have two stalkers and I don't want to recall oh my goodness oh my goodness okay well I shouldn't have lost that but April shouldn't have been on the ramp either so we both play badly but I came on stay on the ramp <laughs> uh not not when the when the prism's out yeah like this like that's perfect like either I can go in and try and take pot shots and that's when you come in right so this trade even though it's not amazing it's better than okay that's great that's great Okay, at this point I'm going to take another probe on the gas. I'm going to do a shield battery here. We don't want to get shrecked by a counterattack. Do you want to keep the aggression up? Very nice bios. Hull damage on the immortals, already making a big difference. And what I'm thinking about right now, other than just microing here, is taking a base. Okay, good. That's oh, not bad trades there for April. In terms of like, he's never really gonna. I say trades, but he's never gonna kill an immortal if I micro incorrectly. But um, what he will do is do damage to the immortals, which is better than nothing, which is what you would typically get. Yeah, I am actually gonna lose an immortal there, but that's just better. Um, okay, we're gonna cut an immortal to build this nexus. Gonna keep poking it. Gonna have to hold our ground here for a second. That's something you do if, the, if you're in that situation where the bios are gonna track you if you try and retreat. So you literally just sit there and take barrage shots. Okay, now we do want one of these. We're gonna have too much gas for remote production anyway. And I am slowly making some extra probes. So if the game goes a bit longer, we'll have some probes. And he's probably got drones on his base, so I need to worry about. Yeah, this is much harder to defend. Even though I am doing it, it's much harder. See the minerals already mining out at about 7.30. That's normal, don't panic. These are much better trades. Did I lose my stalker? I did, on potato. So actually, a Nidus would have probably killed me this game. Yeah, as I say, I'm actually going to make uh, Void Race. And I'm going to do this. Once you have a proxy hatcher Zerg, it's very possible you have more. So we need to check for that. We need to recall the bulk of the drones here. She could have done uh, probe, sorry, could have done more. And this, and why don't we take this free vision here? That's fine. Oh, it's a Mutalisk. Okay, so we cancel the Void Ray, we've got a Phoenix, we've got a Cannon. Prism's out of position here, I'm going to lose Immortal at least. Do as well as we can there, but we can resign ourselves to losing that. 
Okay, nice little roach counter harass. So if he's counter harassing, we're, we're in similar economy, so I should be able to do damage here, right? to the things. Okay, that's why we always make a stargate. This time it was on time. We don't need this because we don't know how well we're going to actually keep this base. And then it's about micro, right? Now it's very micro intensive. I'm really bad at keeping my prism with my mortals, but... Healing a gas here will be nice because we know it's on a very gas intensive thing. Watching for the muter here. Cool. Oh, okay, missed my crit again. So just need to pull, make sure his uh, harass isn't doing too much. Actually, that's our market tower, it's giving me great vision. Fantastic. I'm gonna rebuild that. Oh, hello. Phoenix Micro is very difficult on NA for me, but I'm going to do my best. Don't need to focus on Ravager Micro because I have to... Like, I have to use the Prism to get any value. So if I'm doing this, I can't be doing that, right? It's just a simple thing. Meets are all going to go down now. Next thing we need to worry about is Corruptors. Okay, we can see that. That's really good information. Do another recall. I am eager to so it's almost always Corruptus because what other tech does he have, right? It's just an uh, obvious choice. Okay. <laughs> He's like, I'm doing something <laughs> else! Okay, some pre damage, we'll take it. Back to this old dance. Seems to have more ravages than I expected, so we could make some uh, adjustments there, make a couple more immortals. But you can see this game is already, like, there was a lot of different places where it could have gone wrong if I just didn't build enough cannons to deal with the Mewtwo, if we didn't get on top of that. Okay, it is Hydra. So we need to go back into immortal production, and we can get a Robo Bay and actually get something done with our... Robotech. Okay, we can see everything because of this, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, I could just do this. I might just try that. To be honest, there's loads of different things you can do at this stage of the game. Okay, those Hydra have been split. They shouldn't be split. So that's really oh nice for us. Nidus one has been detected. We can see where that is. You really need to deny... Oh, actually, no, we can't. We can't see where that is. Okay, I might rebuild this... Oh, I don't have a gateway. So again, vision is really important here. We need to try and figure out what the heck is going on. When there's Nidus's and stuff. I assume he got his probes, uh, his drones out. Also, there's a bunch of... A bunch of overlords somewhere, right? He's got to have them, so we need to try and hunt those down. Pick those up before they get in there. Okay, these overlords are all forfeit. As Zerg, you want to try and get them to your new base before the air units come around. Uh, we can't take another one of these. Oh, hello. But yeah, this is already a much closer game because you followed some of the better principles with your proxy hatch out, making it awkward. So much gas. Oh, I just... Let's try and find some more overlords. Do need a... what do you call it? These upgrades. 
Just have a little poke in here, see what's going on. Okay, there's too many hydras, so I need to leave. All the tech is here. Oh, double slam. What the heck? Alright. Definitely was on purpose. <laughs> Apparently, uh, not on purpose, double spire, so that's something to consider. Uh, supply block. Thank the god. No worries. Okay, so now it's just a clown game, right? Like, it's just a clown game, what can you say? What can you say? It's just... It's just one of those clowny games. Because our bases are all split up, tech is in weird places. It's very hard to understand the situation that we're in. But we do have some basic things like any other game. So we have some phoenixes to play around with, so we'll do that. We need some map vision, so we'll do that. Definitely want this. Do anything there. It's a bit of a problem. Time for okay, and now we're just going for a standard sky toss situation. Probably just do one of these as well. I don't want to fully wall ourselves. So, is there a gap here? Oh, okay. Pretty nice. The skies await. Understood. Maybe we can get a couple of those cheeky boys. I'm going to keep kind of boosting that. Ah! No, I hide. I can't get anything. Okay, could go into double disruptors here. We have so much gas that it seems like a really good idea. But it's also scary to go double disruptors because, like, we have no reliable thing against Cyberx. It's a bit scary to do that. What the heck, where are these guys going? Where is this guy going? Right. Need to sort out some <laughs> control groups, uh, some rally points. Oh, we lost our most important building. Uh, I'm just going for the cheeky. Oh, I see my stargates uh, where my nexus should be on the, on the hockey. Still, we have no minerals. Yikes. Oh, even our natural is mining up. Okay, you shouldn't be getting that zone like a tower, that's for sure. Actually, you just need one of these. Plus, upgrade air attack is the most important upgrade. Oh, I got so much gas. What's this? It's high. I'm going to use this as soon as possible. Now we just sit here very calmly and make the good unit. It's a really nice situation for us because of the way the base is uh, positioned. At some point, I think APOP will come and just kill my main, because it's very hard for me to defend that side of the map. I am eager to strike. Of course, I can do a counter attack, but it doesn't need that much to kill me. It's also not that valuable because obviously it's finding out. Let's just get rid of this. Okay, let's have a little peek to see what's going on over there. Let me just take this. Okay. Make a couple of observers actually. We have this double robo production I keep forgetting about. Oh, there's heckin' zealots everywhere, that's sick. You do kind of want a little look around to see what's going on. In case of. Corruptor switch or whatever. We actually don't know what he's making right now. Is it investors? Is it queens? Base right there. 
rich gas is kind of nice. But it's only half minerals, it's a bit of a meme base. It's a Hydra, so it's still got a lot of Hydra, that's what we know. There's actually no reason for us to attack. So that's something. Yeah. I was just thinking the same thing. Okay, all of a sudden we're low on gas. It's just the way it works. We're just doing one of these and play greedy. There's me other one. There it is. Do you need to worry about neurals? I think that's the scariest thing that could happen. Probably want an oracle. But yeah, this turned out into a macro game, right? Like, you can't say that the Zerg played badly because it turned out into a game where things can go wrong for the opponent, and I didn't just win straight up, which is something that can happen. And it did happen, last game. That's the importance of... Oh, that's a lot of uh, corruptors. Oh, your Incas! Oh my god, okay. Just need to try and trade out as well as we can. Am I still making carriers? No, I don't think it is. Uh, go, immortals, go! It's actually quite scary. It's actually quite scary indeed. As I said, I didn't see those Corruptors, so I didn't prepare for them. I could have kind of just guessed, but I don't want to play like that. So. Oh, these Phoenixes should have probably seen it. Is that a Lurker? That oh, was a Lurker. Some more of that. Oh, one of these. Oh my goodness. Whoa, what are these guys doing? Yike. Okay, we just need to make carriers again. Those just went and died, I wonder. Our pylon is under attack. Your probes are under attack. Base is under attack. It's getting kind of scary. Bad boys. We have met the enemy. It's that your foes are under attack. We face the enemy. Areas have arrived. Your foes are under attack. Zach, your foes are under attack. You have not been up. <laughs> Thank you. 
goodness, that's a lot of those things. No, not the Yoinkers. Oh my god, I've learned no Nexus energy, yeah. What else could go wrong? Zowski over here. Uh, we are dead. I did fail to scout the Corruptors. I saw so many Hydra, I was like, there's no way to got Corruptors as well as this, right? I was wrong. Also didn't really make an article, which is another issue. Go Oracle. It doesn't make any difference. Sapop still has an economy. Which makes one of us. Yay. No. Might have been 20 minutes late, but I made it. Okay. It's actually surprising well how um, the Hydras with zero upgrades did. That was actually really crazy. Like we had plus yeah. three and couldn't hold. Oh my goodness. Alright, Chi Chi. I should know. I'll give you the satisfaction of killing my Sky Dosami. I know how Zergs need it. We do. They need to do this. It keeps them <laughs> keeps them happy. To be honest with you, if you left, I was probably just gonna stay in the game and <laughs> And do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, GG. Nice! So, you can see how that was different from the first game. Uh, and we basically, you know, we turned it into a macro game. And I had no idea what you were doing, and then I lost because I made the wrong units. So that's how a macro game normally works, right? But the cannon rush part of it went well. We actually were much, I imagine we were ahead for most of that game. Yeah, we were ahead in, um, wait, which one am I? I'm B-Pop Oh my god, no, we were not we were not ahead. Um, yeah, actually, we went ahead. You, you managed to get a work account on that extra base. Thing is, right? What happens with that situation is there's no need, there's no urgency to go and kill the proxy hatch because you're going to get so much value killing everything in the main, like all the overlords, all the um, uh, spawning pool gases, hatchery queens, drones. Usually you kill those before they night us out. So like um, we didn't need to go and kill that, and we got our own bases up and we macroed out. Uh, I honestly I just made the wrong. Yeah, I look at that at the time. We had almost full supply of carriers. We had like 15 or 12 carriers, and we just got shrugged by Corruptors. And then that just happens if you have no Void Race. And it, it's really simple for Protoss to beat um, Corruptors. So you just need Void I, I, As I said, I could have just blind made a couple of Void Race, and then I would have something against such an attack. But instead, we had no Void Race at all, and we just died to the thing. So that was actually really good. Um, and Thank you. It's, I will say it's quite a bit easier to try to play this when you're literally announcing everything you're doing. So, I mean, it's not like... <laughs> this is true. But then I'm announcing it so that when you're playing a cannon rusher on the ladder, you'll know what's he, what, what he's thinking. And all of the things I did are pretty standard. Grimmy's voice in my head. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, uh, the two main things that kind of set you up for that situation was a drone out on the map. Even though that I scouted the hatchery, as I say, sometimes I'm like make a zealot and send it over there just because it's really annoying to deal with one zealot when you're trying to not lose all your ravages at the ramp. Like zealots just walking across with that gateway. Although having said that, we lost the gateway, so I had to remade the gateway. Again, that's a map specific thing. Sometimes you have your gateway position so that you don't lose it and you can keep producing units off of that. Other times, uh, like this map and Jagan Atta, for example, you always lose your gateway um, when that happens. So that was really good. We are dead, Jefferson. Yeah, we are. We were dead, but it was, you know, it wasn't a... What's the word? It wasn't the cannon rush's fault. That was just me being bad at macro. Like, I, I just didn't scout. I was like, oh, that's a lot of Hydra. He's still on Hydra. And then 50 Corruptors arrive at my door. And I'm like, oh. 
In fact, that was the main way for me to lose after getting up plus three and a billion um, carries was just a very high number of corruptors and some Yoinkers. By that I mean Vipers, of course. So same thing, 15th probe to the ramp. This probe goes to the safety spot first. I'm going to keep saying that because it just loses you the game if, if you don't go to the right spot first. But yeah, we made a game out of it. That's that's the important thing. I, all, all off of the basis of those two things. Um, I think it's really important to pull that first drone. and Because that slows you down. Like last time I had such a ridiculously fast gas. Because I didn't need to spend the extra 50 minerals and uh, wait. The game. I'm going to try and not let Ping win this time. Alright, there we go. And that still looked close, even though I was like, I've given it so much time. Do you need to worry about that? Okay, gas time. Did see a sneaky extra drone going out on the map. That's a good play as well. Like, he's sending his drone back like, hey, I haven't got anything on the map. He actually does, the sneaky boy. The cheeky sneaky. Yeah, that's right. He, he, he. <laughs> Again, greedy cannon. You can do some mineral harass here, but that's very try hard. I would imagine it's probably best for Zerg to take the farthest away base from uh, yeah, this yeah, whole sure. situation. It's whole situation. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's a whole nightmare. <laughs> this fucking hellscape. Let's go over there. Okay, we've got our cannon. We need another pylon. Oh, oh Overlord. Oh, no. Yeah, let it go. Oh, thank you. Bless it. It attacks his own pylon. What? What a noob. What a noob. <laughs> what, a, what a kind gentleman. Okay, three cannons is the bread and butter. Making a few extra probes this time. Spicing it up. Which means we have less shield batteries. But because we got away of the greedy cannon, I think that's fine. Did we have, is that not going to be seen? I wonder. That would be really annoying. I'm going to build a robo immediately. You require more best pink gas here. Yeah. I'm here. Okay, uh, we have some urgency here just to build this shield battery. We don't know its ravages yet. Okay, now, it's ra now we know its ravages. Didn't quite scout with my probe to see that it was. Again, yeah, that's good. That's good. You can use your queen to shoo away the stalker. I'm not going to run past the queen. Okay, I can get some shots on it, but it'll be fairly insignificant. Should have a third shield battery already. What do you think, boys? Are we going to get another stalker off of this? Definitely not. So we're not going to make a. We're not going to make a another stalker off of the gateway because we know it's going to die. Hot shots on the ravages always nice. A little bit of cheeky micro, we should be fine. Put three on gas immediately because we just uh, need it. Next thing is a wall prism because two immortals is useless, right? Oh, same hatchery location. Two Immortals is useless, like uh, we can't push up the ramp any better with two than we can with three, whereas a Warp Prism makes a big difference and we can get our second robot down much faster. Just a bit of poking and prodding, nothing too significant. Oh, we do want a cannon against the proxy hatchery because it could just be a couple of Zogans that cause trouble, so. Made a cannon, don't need to worry about that as much. Probably gonna need another pylon. Lead of the immortal. Focus down the queen, that's great. Oh, good pullback. Oh no. Oh no! Don't just do that. So this is a little gamble that you have to do as the 
Protoss. It's you just recall the two stalkers out as soon as the immortals done. That's how I would typically deal with this kind of play. Oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, I think if Apop sent all of his Ravagers in with the Nidus, I would have just died. So that's something to consider. We need to re-rally this bad boy because uh, we don't want him to die. Still good to see any other sneaky bases. But yeah, that was a really nice action. I consider that we just lost the game there, but um, just a slight difference. I mean, it, sending just Lings is great because it, against an undefended mineral line, Lings will be the best, but you could have just probably killed every worker and then went back into your Nidus once the things that are recalled out were dead. Okay, I'm going to take that guess. Focus this queen. Killing the queens is fantastic if you can do it well. Okay, and seven minute mark is coming up. Of course, you do have to be a bit careful because oh, there's not much here. Because he has the Nidus, so we need to worry about the threat of uh, Probably, maybe I should have killed that first, actually. Yeah, if you kill that Nidus, it's I, I forgot to put it down, so it'll I'll, I'll, I'll just GG. <laughs> yeah. Wait. I haven't, killed, I haven't made it yet. Oh, you still haven't made the head? Yeah. I, okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Made it like ten seconds ago. That's fine. So... I like potato brained and made a, uh, a second Nidus of one. If it makes you feel any better, I won a game against Scarlet because she did that. Okay, we need some vision around these parts. Do a little bit more than usual here, so we can continue making probes without it causing the oversaturation in our main. Hmm, I'm gonna try this first. I think that's a smart thing to do. We can do this. It's a bit of a risky play because we don't know, but we killed his lair quite late. And maybe I should have killed that first because then he can't. Um, then he can't throw down like an extra piece of tech like a Hydrogen or a Spire before I kill it. Whereas this way he could for sure. Okay, I don't know where that just went. Okay, now I do. Is that gonna reach? Please tell me this reaches. It doesn't reach, that's very sad. Which is pretty good for this situation as well. So yeah, he probably threw that infestation pit obviously before. Hello. I really didn't make a return either. I'm not very good at remaking that stuff. Fair enough. Fair enough. Just want to see the timing. Say, if I focus the lair down, would that have made any difference at all? But that first Nidus would have killed me, as I say. I think if you just put everything in there mm -hmm. and uh, killed my my probes and then went back into the Nidus, I come out into the main rubber. You see the opponents. 
not got any more Ravager production, so we actually just overpower him here. And that, you know that there's something going on there, so he's got Infestation Pit. Actually, way before I push in, but that, that's why he made a two gas Infestation Pit, some drones. Um, and obviously we are able to uh, push in and kill stuff. Pull, Roach Warren, Nidus Warren, Leia, maybe some Overlords if we have a Stargate on time. Um, because of the way this game worked out, I actually didn't really have my Stargate coming, so I think Muta would have been a big problem, say if this was a Spire. Like, we just don't have a Stargate forever. So in this game, Muta probably might have won. Probably might have won. That's right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Love it. Wait. Why didn't you make an? Yeah. Oh, I see. You made a second Nidus instead of yeah, a Nidus head. I, I, did. I realized what I did like afterwards, and I'm like, oh my god. Right, Heck, well, this is he, the if yeah. He kills us, I'm just dead. <laughs> you can. Yeah. Can you run into that Nidus and pop out of the other one? That works, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's yeah. like a really expensive, really time. But you taking. get a second Nidus. I mean, so like once you kill the other one, I can't make any more heads, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out, so. For sure. Fair enough. But, yeah. And th that you have the infestation pit for, so... 100% mistake. Okay. No, no, you need layer for Nidus. It doesn't matter if you have an infestation pit. Yeah, I mean, um, with the new Nidus network, you're able to pop in and harass the third or kill the third and whatnot. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that, that's a nice play to have, but you need to escape for sure. Yeah. Yes. So you would have had to have done the awkward thing. Of making the head and then also making another Nidus. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a really solid response. Если тебе логично, что спрашиваешь, если ты не слышишь, это не значит, что он не разговаривает на русском. Так что говоришь, что не имеет смысла. Is there anything else you'd like me to try to do on this? Um, I actually really like the surprise factor there, is that it was just it was still in my head that you were you were going to play similar to last game, but you did the Nidus, and that reminded me to learn to play and recall my two stalkers because that's what i'm supposed to be teaching you guys um mm. is how to deal with stuff i did it the first game and you didn't notice so that was nice uh and then this game i didn't do it and you did notice and we probably would have just lost so um yeah that was fun i think the early game was great for you again like you were much further behind as in like behind the ramp i didn't kill too many roaches or queens or do any damage that i feel like other players would have taken or that you took in the first game, for example, you did build awkward spores and stuff like that. Like, all of that just doesn't really help. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that was really cool. Um, you just had a very solid start to the game. Again, second probe out of the Nexus. Next probe comes in and builds the Forge. Very simple. Chrono Boost at the start. Chrono Boost at the start is just because. Oh, so your V poptosis? I was wondering why, why my cheese got shut down so hard. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> oh, Grimbus. Grimbo Slice. Um, what were talking about before that? Let's track of my thoughts. Okay, so first probe goes over there. Oh, look, it's a hatchery. Cool. First pipe goes down. Very expectant of the. Uh, Drone, because as I say, that's something every Zerg should do every time. I can't. I've been trying to get Uko to do it forever, and he just doesn't. Um, he doesn't believe. Um, it might be even worth keeping that first. Oh, what the heck? Um, keeping that first drone by the pylons might be a good idea. I think gas is way. Giving some. Yeah. Just because you can uh, pull again, like, I, I might let you in. Oh, also you can block the uh, gateway's location. Mm. As, uh, and actually, I, I won't focus too much on that kind of stuff. You're doing just fine. Thanks, mate. Patented drone harass, dude. <laughs> Okay, Roach Warrants, we know what's going on. Cyber as soon as the thing is done. I have a feeling I forgot my pylon gas. Bit of an issue. Okay, so I didn't notice any drone leaving this time, but we have the second probe. We might as well. You know, we might as well have a cheeky little scout around. I'm gonna 
me. It's a bit dangerous. Uh, really, I should have built this second pylon much faster. So we want our cannons over here and not not over here. Playing the long game. We're not playing a. Uh, we're not playing a try and kill him. Whoops. Okay, if this happens, which I did on purpose, of course, to show you guys this cool trick. You just do that. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Three shield batteries, three cannons. This basically means you can't die to anything early. As I said, my gases are a little late this time. So the robo's a bit late. Okay, really fast layer. That's really nice. That's why you pluck up with the stalker. So these first two stalkers need to go across the map. Can you get this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we haven't found a proxy hatchery this game. We want to save the recall. I'm gonna wait just a little longer. Need to wait for the immortal. Nice. I'm gonna kind of this. Once this is about half done, we can think about recalling the stalkers. Right now would be nice. Of course, it could just be uh, Formos. So that's another issue. Let's go full on gas. Let's build one of these. Okay, very nicely played. I don't know what's going on, so this is really well played. Could be Muta, could be... Other things. I'm not making... Uh, yes, of course. Other things. Other things, you know. All the other things. Uh, because we recalled the stalkers so early, I have made sure to need to watch out for the Nidus here. Um, we're making a second immortal, not because I want to, but because I feel like we could just die to a walking down the ramp situation. Because at this point, three cannons and three shield batteries don't necessarily save your ass. Okay, so we see that there's a base. We need to be very aggressive now. With this prison. Oops. Get that micro there for a second. Still watching the mini map because we don't want to get Nidus in the ass whilst it's happening. Obviously, as a Zerg player, you're thinking. When should I notice? And it's when the opponent runs up the ramp with his immortals and has to work on his prison micro. Still need to keep looking over there. So I don't actually have a recall. Ah! One queen beats a stalker. I actually didn't know that. It used to be. And it is the good old swarm hostages. So this is actually fine. I'm okay in this situation. So for this, I like to do this. So models can hold for quite a while here, but they can't hold forever. So we need to have a couple of backup plans. Gonna make some observers, because vision's important.
Hello, chicken man, by the way. Just gonna keep being aggressive. Oh, one hit on that. Nice. Okay, let's just get some vision on the map. I'm gonna do this and get this. She doesn't have enough uh, Ravage of Rush anymore, so we're just going to plow through. Okay, there comes the Swim Host for us. Oh my goodness, he's got enough of those things though. Run things, run! Point is to kill that actually, I'm not sure what I do. See, obviously, the problem with Swarm House is it's very difficult to. Uh, very difficult to deal with this kind of small harass, it's just two immortals, but. You're relying on these time based units. So we can just sit here and be annoying forever. Because you don't want to use those. And obviously, I, I didn't actually quite say it, but the plan against almost is to mass expand and make it very uh, impossible, very difficult to. Kill bases as fast as you're taking them. So like he's got us almost there, he's gonna kill this base, he's gonna kill this stuff, but we've got another three bases behind us. And it's just very difficult to have that consistent DPS to kill bases as fast as I'm making them. And we also have stalkers to defend, kill uh Nidus swarm mm. heads uh, before they pop. And also things like roaches and lings are still a threat. So it gets awkward. So I can win because like you're kind of stuck in Stalker Zealot against Roach Link, which obviously Stalker Zealot doesn't thrive in. Um, but yeah, that was good. I liked it. Um, so you went for a fast lair after your first queen, mm -hmm. and then you were going to Nidus into the main. Well, I saw I was actually putting the Nidus down, and I saw you already have recall. Like I saw the animation that you recalled three stalkers. Ah. I was like, well, nah, I'm not gonna do that now. I can put a Nidus down later if I need to leave my main. Yeah. I was like, uh, I guess Swarm Host. Yeah, that's a really smart decision. If you can see the recall, you're like, well, that's not going to work. I'm going to do something else. That's perfect. Let me get a drink real quick. Awesome. Right so, Grimmy, is uh, Swarm Host a good response to this coming from a Protoss player? Um, against an average cannon rusher on the ladder? Yes, I think it's fantastic. Against someone that's done this a lot, that does things like recall his stalkers blindly, they're not very good. Um, I mean... Actually, you asked about Swarm Host. You didn't really say because because usually you go Nidus into Swarm Host, not Swarm Host into Nidus. Um, still good against against a ladder opponent. It's very difficult for Protoss to have the response. Um, there's been a few things we've tried the cannon rush, the cannon tribe. That is, uh, we tried things like Phoenixes to shoot down the Locust. We've tried things like uh, Colossus to try and slow down the uh, Locust from killing the proxy. 
But I think the most successful way has always been mass expanding. So I think if the opponent knows to do that, then it's Protoss favored. It's just quite easy to get up bases, uh, get some map control, deny the Nidus. Is, um, once you know how to do that, but it's very small knowledge. Hopefully maybe this video will help people and you guys watching will learn. But uh, generally I think uh, Swarm Host is much easier to do than defend. Um, until the defender has had some practice. The reverse of the cannon rush, which is obviously easier to do than defend. Um, I said it. I said it. It's easier to do than defend. Um, the initial stage, at least. And mostly that comes from, and I don't mean to be mean to any Zergs when I say this, but Zergs don't bile well against cannons. It, it, most of the value from this build at the lower level comes from the fact that the Ravagers just run into the cannons and die. Um, and that's not because Zerg players are lazy or bad or anything, it's just that this is a very specific micro for a specific situation. Like in a regular macro game, when when do you find the Ravagers have to bile cannons without getting shot by them? It's just a very niche, small situation. But once you get that down, uh, biles become like you can make them three times as valuable depending on which player is playing them. So when I'm playing Scarlet and she's hitting the Biles every time without getting a single cannon shot on the Ravages, that feels and plays out very differently to when I'm playing a low GM who's running his Ravages into the cannons and uh, losing Ravages to them. And then I'm like, okay, well, this is a free win. So there's definitely a, like a, a, skill, um, a skill issue, I guess, with the way this plays out. But if you ask Scarlet, she's like, oh, this is easy to hold. I just do these biles without like the cooldown, like waiting for any, uh, like the, the cooldown being there. What am I trying to say? I just throw the biles out, and then when the cooldown comes off, I do it again. There must be a more eloquent way of saying that. But she finds it easy, but it's not for people that don't have that skill. And um, that's why it's easier to do. But uh, again, it's like very player specific. Sorry, April, are you ready? I heard you cough, but that doesn't mean ready. I can quit. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the cough of readiness. We're ready. <clears throat> yeah. So you want me to change it up at all? I keep going roaches. I think, um, well, I think keep going roaches just because... So the other response is like a spineling gasless thing you can do that, that can catch players off guard. I think that's pretty garbage, um, generally oh. speaking. Like, I, I wouldn't recommend my friends to learn that because it's bad. Like, it, like at a certain point, it stops being useful. Whereas Ravages go all the way to the top, man. Um, all the way yeah. to the top. What's better to learn than that? They do seem like it's the best chance you have of just, like, holding and buying it. Because it, it essentially... I think a, a big difference is if you're playing against a cannon rusher that's really good, like, you're no longer trying to, like, necessarily beat them at their cannon rush. You're just trying to out-expand and mine more than they are. Yeah, that's a perfectly legitimate. It seems like, in general, how you're supposed to kill Kirkos, no matter what. Mm. Okay, so same thing, second probe goes out, builds the pylon, third one comes out. I did make a mistake of not going here first, but we got lucky, because the opponent is going hatch first. Okay, so we need to build this pylon, and then this one right next to it. So this is a different map, for those that didn't realize. But what's nice about it? Wait, what? What? Yeah. What? What's oh, nice no. about it is you guarantee that first gateway. They can't use a drone. Actually, I, I told Apop to do it last game, but in fact, um, it's this game pure grimy fashion. This it's game it didn't work out. Yeah, that, I know I've had a history of doing that. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Try doing this. Instantly kill you with whatever it is I just told you to do. Do I not have a probe here? I'm bad. Okay, so what I'm doing here is very bad. Delaying the cyber because I just don't have a probe there is terrible. So that's something you shouldn't do. <laughs> Heck. Alright. Um, okay, second pylon's a bit late. We do see that there's a building there. I mean, you can check to see if it's not a... if it's a veiling nest, but generally those are really bad. So. Yeah, 
after this, by the way, I can do the other cannon rush, which I think uh, is the strongest, but very map specific. This one that I'm doing here, you can do it on any map, which is why it's very nice. Three shield batteries, or well, two in a robo, and then a shield battery, depending on how the guy. I'm low on minerals right now, so I'm going to risk it. Actually, this cannon's terrible. What am I thinking? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? Yeah. Just hearing the grimy commentary is the best part of it. Actually, this is awesome. Oh, look at that. What? That's, that's luck. Range? Yeah, that oh, must be maximum my range. God, dude. Oh. Hey. <laughs> but it's the exact same situation. This gateway, pylon, and cannon are all going to go down for free, and you just need to accept that, and everything's fine. It seems like. It's easier, there's much more uh, wiggle room. You can still go to the very uh, bottom there without, like, right there, you can you can go even lower. I think I just want to file it, honestly, just to get the cannon out of the way. Okay, this time I'm feeling spicy. Did I lose my probe? Yeah, I did. Nice. Yeah. Oh my god. Should have a third shield battery here. <laughs> okay, since we're playing blind, I'm just gonna do this. Just one cannon should make all the difference in the world, you know? Okay, there's a lair going. That's something that's important to pay attention to. Actually, you know what? It's much better to have this pylon than the other one. We can get some extra vision against Nidus Swarms. Ah! Looks like a free overlord to me, boys. So we know from the timing of the lair and the strength of all of these, uh, sorry, and the number of um, fingers that he has here. What's it called? The uh, Ravages, that's the one. We know you can't have like a spire or something, you just have way too much gas and things. It looks like no tech in the main. Oh, you cheeky little ducket. Don't you think about it. Come on. Get that crap out of here. So I'm happy to just keep going Immortals for now. Oh, 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 oh. Ah! That was well played from. Mr. Pop! Yes? That was well played, I said. Oh. Again, 7 minute Nexus. The industry standard.
He's already rebuilding his spawn. What a guy. Thinking ahead. We're going in for the long run, my friend. I mean, I may have done it again. Don't, uh... Oh! Okay. Don't you do it. <laughs> okay, we're good. Almost less than a month of the broodling, so I'm really sad. Oh, that would have been spicy. Teleport successful. Zero back, prior. Ah, you little observant son of a bitch. It's my nickname in high school, how did you know? Ah, the conga. No. Bend it with Newton. The absolute madman. Oh my goodness, that's a heckin' ton of those things. Gotta be careful with speed zones of Newton. Double Evo Chamber. Did the old switcheroo on me again? Definitely what we need. He 
GG. GG. That observer actually hard. saw everything. <clears throat> that was really important. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very good observer. I almost wonder if Hydra is a better second thing to go to. I mean, Hydra beat Immortals, so that's something. I can make and Colossus, Voyager. I guess. Yeah. And Voyager is. We do have double robo production, so that kind of puts us into Mechtos, and we also situate ourselves very far away from you because that's just the nature of proxying. So that's uh, definitely something to keep in mind there. But once again, the game went long and you held, so really good. Really nice. All right, I'm going to try this again. It'll be a different kind of rush. Hello, foul big head. Foul with his six day, 24 hour uh, work schedule has found a few seconds in his free time to say hello in chat. I am blessed, Foul. Thank you so much. But yeah, as you can see, guys, uh, that was a one gate into a robo. You make a couple of stalkers that insulate you against the Nidus display because you have two stalkers to recall. You don't want to recall an immortal. But it's not very aggressive. You allow the Zerg to do other stuff. This next style is perhaps, well, definitely the strongest style. And it is just a two gate, one gas. Those things are very important, so don't make three gates or one gate and four gas. Uh, you just, uh, you want to make stalkers. That's it. You just make stalkers and shield batteries and you kill your opponent. I will say this APOP, don't try anything like a Nidus or anything because it dies, uh, you die way before you can use it. So it's all about just not dying in the early stage. Actually, it's it's just about not dying, and if you don't die, you win. So. No ball Sorry. So you can snowball there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you get the sick biles, stalker micro isn't there, then you get a bunch of ravages and queens, and that's it. Or you lose some things, and stalker shield battery just crushes you. So this is uh, probably the strongest build in the game. And you want to pull at least one drone. Okay, I'm... <laughs> Could you go away please? Thank you. <laughs> Alright, now come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's game over by the way. Uh, you, you need to not be a potato. That's definitely important. I think this one's GG for me. I, my spawning pool didn't go down. Oh, let's go again. It's fine. Yeah, let's go again. I also messed up. Actually, I I, I, sh I was trying to be cute, but I, I'm trying to teach a basic cannon rush here, so I won't be cute. So you can either just... The Chrono Boost at the start of the game, basically make sure that you have enough minerals to build that wall for when a reactor drone pool arrives. So what I did there was I made an extra probe, and what you... If you want to be cute, you can cancel the probe and then build the wall if there is a drone pool. But if there is no drone pool, you can get away with an extra probe. So that's the little gamble. Well, not gamble. The gamble is that I could cancel and build in time. So just that I was good enough to do that, which I wasn't. Um, I blame pain once again. Um, but if you want to be sure and safe, considering this, like even without the extra probe, you're going to win if you do this correctly. There's really no need to do it. It's just, uh, I don't know egotistical unnecessary thing to do like i can get another probe here but you don't need it so just win the game instead how about that that sounds way better way better Send across the map. again uh you're going here first if you see the hatch then you go up the ramp that will also give you some extra minerals for when you're up the ramp so all around good stuff <laughs> What do you do if you get 12 pulled? Uh, you build further away. We can do that as well. Just out of curiosity. Yeah, so that's why this first probe will go to the left of your hatchery here. If there is a hatchery, then he goes to the ramp. So if you see people do that with that probe, it's because they were going to build a pile on that. All right, so this time we're going to cancel this probe. You can see I'm going to float some minerals here, but we're going to make sure we get the wall down, right? See, we have an extra 50 minerals there. We could have had the extra probe this time with the timing of this pull. You build your gateway first, always build your gateway first, and then you build your cannon. Keep on probe down there, go see what's going on over here, take a guess. Mm. 
see two gases, that means ravages. Or Falsenitis, which is the end of the game for him, so that would be nice as well. Um, <laughs> that would be nice if he did that. Uh, on this map, it's actually really stupid, because uh, you can't build... Like, this cannon can be denied by drones, so that's one way to just win the game. Next thing we want... Y yeah, I, I think that's pretty much rip. We can try. You build your second gateway after this cannon. We want the cyber on time, so we're going to rally this guy over here. Cyber as soon as the gateway's done. Let's finish up. We want two on gas. Yes, I didn't mention that yet. Two on gas. And then we want to build. All the rest of our money goes into cannons. We can scout around to this bad boy to see if there's any more shenanigans. But yeah, this cannon doesn't protect much on the high ground, so if you can stop the front cannon from going up, you can stop any future cannons from going up. Um, you have a really easy time with it. So we can assume from the two gas that we saw that it is a that it is a hecking ravager thing. I should have too much gas, interesting. Shield batteries are the rest of our money. <clears throat> Three cannons at the front. Insulate you against any kind of early attacks. And then we need to bank for the next couple of stalkers. And then we go and poke. We can poke a group tumor. Give us a bit more breathing room. And then it's just shield batteries in between the stalker production. And that's it. We don't want any more than this amount of probes. We don't want uh, any more production. It's just, this is it. We make shield batteries, we make storms. That's our business. If he pulls back and refuses to fight, then we poke at the, the drones. You can go around the other side of where his ravages are not. You see that makes it very awkward for him. And once you have four, you can start doing this and bait him into the cannons. Probably need a pylon sometime soon. Oh yeah, don't worry, supply block. Cool. It's a bit awkward here. Anytime you can poke the Ravagers, do. If they run away, you just kill some drones. Shield battery at the back, it's not doing anything. Don't build more cannons, that's a mistake people make. Because it's uh, just fodder. Okay, we're going to focus the Ravagers here. Cannons are on a control group, and that's it, GG. Uh, so yeah, this is just really difficult to deal with. Uh, I'll have a look and see if they did anything wrong, but it looked, it seemed fine. Um, it's just very difficult to deal with. If, if you let the cannons get up, as I say, I'm pretty sure you could just pull on his first cannon and things are fine. Um, because this low ground cannon, it looks like it does something, but actually it, does, it doesn't really barely protects his pylon, and then the next cannon needs to go like there. And there's no room for a gateway even, like a second gateway. So if the Zerg knows what's up, this cannon goes down. Anything, anything at the front here will be denied by some drones. And then once your queen and uh, maybe a spine is out, then there'll be no more cannons at all. So it's just one of those things you have to know to do it. I saw you in a ladder game, uh, the guy puts his cannon at the very top there, and I was like, ah, oh, if you just denied that, he'd have such an easy time. You won anyway, but yeah. Yeah, I did. Thought it might be too easy in the game if I had denied it. Kiwi says the only way I lose this with this setup is gas is two queen, two spine. This thing's in the way. Hello Nina, how are you? Long time no see. Sorry I haven't been hanging around on your stream. I haven't been hanging around on anyone's stream uh, recently. That doesn't mean I don't still have love for you. Hope you're well. Um Two Queen, two Spine, Massling, Drone Pool as Queen Spines finish. Yeah, but the thing is, you can see that they're going to do that because they don't have the two gases. 
as soon as you see two gases, you know it's ravages. If you see no gases, then you're like, well, I need to put down ten cannons, and there's literally nothing you can do with gases that's going to beat just all your money in cannons. Okay. And I love you too, thanks. And uh, yeah, um... again, I lost my train of thought. I'm doing that a lot today. Mm. Yeah, I think um, Kiwi dies to that, but he's just not checking the gases. As soon as he does that, he knows that, like, you just can't have Ravagers if you don't have gases. So, so I imagine the Roach one. It's true. It's all true. Facts. Facts on this stream. Um, okay, pool finishes. Roach one comes down. Uh, you see Uko does some weird things. I think he builds, like, a second hatchery, but I, I don't remember if that worked at all, so I'm not going to recommend that. This is the basic response. <laughs> You know, it's a very simple situation, it's just one that Zerg loses in, and I think that's the, the simple fact of it. Um, Rotron goes up. Roach is coming down. Two Stalkers. You see the Stalkers are being produced at around the same time as the Roaches. Uh, the yeah, cannons... Yeah, the cannons are buying time for the shield batteries, and once they're up, it's playing against, you know, insanely uh, efficient static defense with uh bios and, and that's basically it. and i say that if you get the bios down they do like 80 damage each i'll check i'm pretty sure it's 80. um 60 okay zerg needs a buff um 60 damage each is 300 health so five bios will kill a cannon um and in theory if you have insane bios and that's amazing right but the fact is you're not going to get to the cannons without taking stalker shots let alone cannon shots if you take cannon shots and stalker shots you're going to lose your ravages very fast and you see with the way that we have the cannons really forward here the ravages need to they have a very small space they can walk through without getting hit by this cannon for example so i'm fighting whether ravages are not right now to try and poke at the drones and that makes the zerg think okay i need to you know take the fight with the stalkers anywhere i can and that's also a loss right you can't fight the stalkers either so it's actually just insanely good. We see this cannon getting a shot. I go back in for some drones. See the, the Ravagers have to walk into the mineral line every time. We walk back over here. We take some drones. And already, right, you could probably just plonk a Nexus down after, like, some of these drone kills and just get out of the situation. But you don't need to because you're going to win anyway. So. so, yeah, you do have 600 minerals right now. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, some spines, obviously, with that money would be... Because spines are good, like they're, they're going to do something, whereas we're floating minerals right now. We shouldn't be floating gas either. I'm not sure if that's a inject problem, or maybe that's why Uka makes a second hatchery. Probably. Yeah. Very tough to inject. Thing. Yeah, injecting in between buying perfectly, and as I say, having to reposition your ravages around all the time makes this very difficult for the Zerg. Yeah, I would say the space up here is a bit cramped, so if you lose any of these cannons, you're going to find that it's very difficult to not have all of these buildings piled down and you're going to lose ground very quickly. So that's something to consider. Um, yeah, and then like equal stalker to ravage account is great because you always have the shield batteries to fall back on. Desperation drone pool is fine in this situation because you could, you know, April could tell that this wasn't working and you need to try something here. I think this can work if I focus the drones and not the ravages or something. Because you still have money, you can still continue producing things. If I lose the cannons, then you could be on, like, Ling with the uh, minerals, and uh, Ling Ravager will start to squash this. That said, you still have the slow ground cannon to pull back onto, and you can kite Lings and that stuff, and you still have the residual energy from the shield battery. So I think this is just a very difficult uh, thing for Zerg. And the main thing I would say is you need to learn to deny the front cannons. It's, it's almost like a complete gamble from the Protoss, to do what I did, which is this cannon right here. If this is denied, then I think the game ends up really awkward, and I would fall back into the low ground and play one gate robo, which is what I was doing in the first couple of games. So you would only go two gate if you got that cannon up, is what you're saying? Um, yeah, I mean, that makes it sound like it's like a cool option or reactive thing. I I'm trying to get the two gate up because that's what's working. If I have to fall to the low ground, I feel like we're in a very bad position. It's it's not like I, I I'm it okay with that. It feels very easy if I can push you back down the ramp. Yeah. Like you've spent so much money on the top. Yeah, and I would have started this gateway, and I don't have a pylon on the low ground yet, so anything else building there is going to be late. Um, I don't have any gas to build a robo or anything, so. Yeah, I think that that's pretty scary. And uh, that's generally uh, falling away from the ramp 
you would do against any kind of heavy spine response. Spines, by the way, I think is definitely something we should be aiming for. Because, yeah, you have 15 on minerals, but as it turns out, that's just way too much for what you're producing. So you could have maybe 13 on minerals and still be absolutely fine. Uh, there's no real need for that money, but by the sounds of it, right? All right let's try again. Okay. So for your tutorial, how many drones should you pull for a cannon? Three. Three? <clears throat> if you do it immediately. Three if you see it go down and you're sat, like you see it go down and then you immediately pull three drones. Like the five seconds that it takes to get there isn't relevant. Maybe four because I might zap you with one of my probes and you want a drone to fight back. Um, so maybe four. Let's, let's say four. Okay. But I need to use that probe to build things. So it's not like I can reliably say I'm always going to deny one drone. Yeah, this is interesting. As I say, I tried to get Uko to do things like pull on the cannons, and he's like, ah, I don't know, that's such a specific thing, I'm not going to do it. He wants to play in a, in a, in a very... Uh... He's got his method. Yeah, he wants to play in a very methodical way, which you can respect. Hello, Killjoy, how are you? Yeah, this probe always goes here first. Well, it wants to be on this side of the hatchery. And we can, we can show what a 12 pull does to that. Honestly, I think 12 pull is the worst response you can do like a meta game I to a damage. I, yeah. I, I really don't like it. I'm going to have the minerals this time. Um, something that's quite effective as well is just to pull a bunch of drones and try and kill the pylons. It can mess up really easily. If you just don't want to play against cannon rushing, you can always do that. This map is fantastic because you can just wall off with one pylon here. I guess, I guess. It's okay, here comes the cannon. So this is what that guy did to you on the ladder. Danger. So I might try this. But if you have three zapping me the whole time, then it's fine. I might then try this, I guess. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna save this bad boy. So now I have a really crappy cannon, and my cyber's gonna be late because I was worried about that. I don't have my second gateway either, because where am I gonna put it? Like here? That's still in some way a great idea. So now we're gonna fall back. Like that changes the dynamic insanely. Insane. A very simple thing. Yeah. Can you reach? No, I think. <clears throat> Can't build any cannons on the ground, so I'm just gonna be floating. I mean, I guess it's nice. Oh, I can see that overlord. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's alright. I'm gonna oh, that's okay. shoot my own gateway. Yeah. I was thinking about that. We poor boys. Let's see how far I have to go to actually use my shield batteries here. the only thing that's giving us high ground vision right now, so we don't want to lose that too fast. And now it's become a one gate uh, robo, which is basically what I did, well that is exactly what I did every game uh, before we started doing two gate, uh, but off of a worse position. 
We're still gonna lose a pylon, a cannon, and a gateway, except then after that is over, we're gonna lose more stuff. Uh, I don't actually know if I can probably not. In any case, probably want an immortal instead. Okay, and now we still have the strength of the warp prism against roaches, which is fantastic. It's just a worse position. Simply said. Yeah, I like what you're doing there. You're not letting me really fight you. Now it's the same thing. Okay, there is a hatchery on the map. I'm gonna be cheeky. Ah! Bad micro. That doesn't look right. Gonna send this back. You require more Vespin gas. Oh! Oops, 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 oops! You require my skill. You have not enough okay, so that was an idea. Ash Robin, thanks so much. Okay, what do we 
have? We have a, is that a spire? Yeah, a spire. And a rich one. Okay, you did forget to do something. Which is, mm, yeah, okay. you remembered, you just remembered. Oh, God. Unfortunately. I wonder if I should just send them to the other side of the map, ASAP. I think, yeah, to your proxy hatch. I haven't got anything to kill it for ages. Just need a pylon here, there's a bit of dead space, I don't want to get shrugged. Got a pylon out here as well. Observer. Ah! Save me, Speed Zone. What? You can use them too? That doesn't sound fair. Oh, look at this! Right Who soon does that? No one in the world does that. Well, I was like, where did they go? <laughs> they had to go somewhere, right? You killed them all! What do you mean? I made those from larva that were still Oh, that, this Voidra has 11 kills, so that's something. Yeah! <laughs> I was like, ah, okay. Get a little bit of extra value out of this. Oh my goodness. Attacking guy, dude. I am eager to destroy the enemy. Oh my Hacker man! Look at this hacker. Man, it's, he really is, guys. Don't play Grimmy, he just hacks. Makes it so much easier when you can see everything on the map, you know? Yeah. I don't know why people would play without this. Yeah. <laughs> I need a fleet bacon. Okay, we're swapping into a Hydra den again. This Sneakerson. <laughs> He's had enough of my observer. He's like, that's it. Thing out of here, dude. Engaging the enemy. On the wings of justice. Zero back. Cryo. Anan Porkov. I will. Time for battle. You have not enough minerals. I stalk through the star. I am eat the sky. We are full power. Anan Porkov. Successful. You have not enough minerals. Not Ork field on the Oh my god. I am eager to strike. My precious observer, how are you? <laughs> we pretty did. I think it's good for Zerk to tech switch a lot. If I don't have an observer sat in your base, then I don't get to see that. And I, I need to make a spore immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then a cheeky uh, a cheeky Hydra den when I'm still making Phoenixes and Void Race or Corruptors. Seems like a good plan. Beating up on Apop? Not beating, we're learning. Samo sent me. Thanks so much, Samo Sidekick, for hooking me up with that raid. What a treat. Nice. Nice. 
Okay, if you want to do the 12th pool, I probably have about one game left in me, so I gotta eat and nap and finish. One more, my, and it's the 12th pool. My, okay. only, my, my own tennis games tonight. Your tennis game? What? What oh, did you just say I to call... me? Yeah, I, that's what I call streaming when I'm on someone else's channel, because I don't like self-promoting in other people's channel. Oh, really? How cute. Yeah. No, everyone, go follow Whoa. Apop. <laughs> Fantastic Zerg streamer. I mean, you already know him. There's not a single person here who's like, who the heck is Apop? Oh, he heck? is a pillar and a joy. Right, of so the I'm going to 12 pool. Do it. See what happens. We'll just, we'll just see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I don't like a 12 pooling cannon rush, though. It's It feels so bad. Yeah, it is. It's just, it's just really not great. I will say a 12 pool into no zerglings or two zerglings and then ravages. That's actually a very specific response that I've probably forgotten by now that I hope will come to me if, if you do it. Um, I mean, that's got it. That's like metagame. You have to know you're going to get countered. Yeah, because it's absolute garbage so. against anything else, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you will just straight lose the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you tried it. It's oh, like, I didn't do it. Grimmy, I'm sorry. I'm such an idiot. I just started macroing. Like the that. shameful drone. <laughs> I can't believe it. Okay, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Look at this guy making a drone. He even made an overlord. Oh, we're just chit chatting, or you know, having a good time. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, for your guide and your etc., what is your uh, what is the best map, and what's the worst map to cannon rush on in the pool currently? Uh, Jag is the best map to do virtually any cheese. Um, really? So Jag for Forge first for Gate Forge. Against twelve pool, against hatch first, it's just the best map. Fantastic for PVT. It's actually just my favorite map. Yeah, yeah, Jag. It's a good one. It's a good one. I like Jag a lot too. Yeah. Quite a good Zerg map. Kiwi, I will address your question uh, after a pop leaves because I don't want him to. Yeah, you know, we don't have much time with him left. Well, Kiwi had a question. I, I don't want to go over it. I'd have to stop the uh, games. So. Oh, okay. We'll just wait. Wait for this guy to get on secret. his jolly way. Is yeah. some secret information I'm not supposed to know? No, he asked a question about um, the drone pools on the pylons at the start. I think a drone pool is pretty effective, but once again, Jag is the best map for dealing with that. It's just actually, Jag is garbage for two gate, as we saw, I think, with the denying of the forward cannons. I think that's the only time where Jag is just really sad. So again, we always send our probe to this side of the hatchery, because if there's not a hatchery, we go, ah, danger. Okay, there's two things you can do. You can send your probe up the ramp. That's dangerous against a metagamer who sends a drone down. The hatch goes down like 120, so usually okay, there's some things for us. See, this second probe is going to arrive and be like, hey, man, how are you doing? Pylon finishes, and bam, look at, the, look at the beautiful maneuvers that we can do here. Should have actually just let him build a hatchery, because if he doesn't realize he's being cannon rushed after this, then it's fantastic. And then we want a pylon here, and maybe another pylon here. Don't want to lose our probes, so we're just going to keep those around. I didn't cancel because of ping! Okay. No cancel gang! That's right, he knows the gang. I want to cancel this bad boy, and then as soon as that's all over with, you can do this, you can take a gas. Could have, could have taken a gas before, that, actually. But yeah, that's the 12th pool held, so if there's no Ravagers coming up to this, we're actually in a fantastic spot. Uh, one thing to note is, if the Lings goes, whoa, straight across the map, then we need a gateway in the wall as a placeholder for a uh, Cyber later. But if the Lings go straight across the map and ignore the cannons because they know that they won't break it, which they don't, then... Um, that's something to consider because you can't just lose if lings get there and you don't have a wall or a cannon. So, a cannon here. Oh, I could have put that forward one. Mm, maybe. Okay. And uh, now we can do all sorts of things if we like. Um, go for a three gate robo. That is the classic. We can go for a double robo. It's my favorite, always, just because Prism gives us so much more micro ability that uh, just Stalkers and a Wall Prism don't have. Uh, you can still micro, obviously, with a Wall Prism when you go through Gate Robot. 
the robo comes in much later and uh, your micro less powerful units. Could be a 12 pull into a Nidus. Cheeky Apoptosis. Oh my goodness. May well do that. Now, it's tempting to go for an Adept and that can guarantee us the knowledge of a Nidus because you can just see the lair. But if he's going Ravages behind us, then you don't want to give up your heckin' thing. And what am I trying to say? You don't want to give up Stalkers, because I'd have one Stalker and one uh, and one Adept right now, which is much less useful than two Stalkers against someone that's trying to buy all these cannons, because the cannons aren't relevant, they'll just get biled. One Stalker is not enough to make the Ravagers care, but two Stalkers is actually quite relevant. I'm going to two gas here. We're going to scout for an overlord, just in case it is the cheeky, cheeky play. And we need to be mindful of the fact that a Nidus can come up at any time. And we can recall these stalkers. But obviously, it's a much slower start because we had to invest so much into not dying to it. Okay, it's fine. I'm going to reduce the surface area and everything. I shouldn't die here. I'm fairly confident. Maybe I needed one more shield battery. Maybe we might just die here. Okay, we need to cancel this. Yeah, one more shield battery. I did forget my three shield battery rule. Okay, so for this, we just do this. He doesn't have drones right now, so we can just chill. We might be able to hold here, still. Still have a cannon and a walled in stalker. And that third shield battery kicked in, so you can see just how important that bad boy was. Let's still make stalkers. We actually just have loads of resources compared to our opponent, so we can be a bit frivolous. And he's I uh, probably just completely gas us right now. So I cancelled my robot because we might die, but had I kept it, we'd be in a even more amazing spot than we are already. You guys thought I would lose. Even a late bed shield hey, battery. I'm not done yet. What the hell? <laughs> I mean, of course, the opponent has such a good chance of winning. I mean, maybe. I don't know what you what you got cooking. It looks like more wings is what we have cooking. Ah, run. Yeah, I'm just gonna go into this because our robot is over here. So just want to play a bit defensively. Okay. Okay. Let's see how it is. Importantly, we know the opponent doesn't have a secret base, so what he's on is what he has, which is nice. We want this to eventually finish over here. Ooh. Once again, the prism worth its weight in gold. Probably just afford one of these to be honest. GG! So, yeah, that was actually nice because the way we have to play this is like that doesn't exist um, because it's just much less of a threat. Even completely uh, off guard, we managed to salvage the situation. And um, that's just because even with everything dying at the front, you still have a walled in cannon. So that's going to deal with links. The spines struggle to creep forward enough to, and you need a bunch of them to actually deal with a cannon. And you can keep building back. So this is what I mean by gas the stuff being quite bad. It's just that you don't even need to scout it to deal with it. And just what you have anyway seems to deal with it. So yeah, but that was interesting. That, that was probably a good chance of winning on the ladder. I think that's really good because you need to be very on top of things, keep calm, and make reactions. So yeah, that was pretty decent. Pretty heckin' decent. So, yeah, I just don't like 12 pull though into that. It's just like, I'm just, I'm so far behind, I have no drones. Oh my god. 
Meanwhile, all that I've really accomplished is pushed you very far away from my ramp. Which mm. is, I mean, not insignificant, but it's not very good. Mm. So, uh, well, who cares about that? Yeah, you're right, Q. You're one away from maximum range on the pylon, so you go to max range and move it back one, and then you've got your nice cannon placement. Kiwi is correct. Smart boy. So yeah, at this point, we've got six Zerglings coming on in. Note, the Zerg has uh, 14 drones, and we have 18, but two of ours are just uh, not mining, because they're over here cannon rushing. These pylons are just to protect the gateway and pylon. I uh, should cancel that. I'm going to blame Ping. And uh, Apop did something really cool here, which is to split off and go for the probes. Because if you lose both of those, then obviously very difficult to salvage that. You can squeeze out. Actually, not on this map. I'd need to do the Kiwi wall to uh, to do that, which I didn't. So if I lost those two probes, we wouldn't be able to continue the cannon rush. And Zerg's actually in a fine spot. Uh, we actually made two gases and then cancelled them. Oh, we made one. Yeah, we cancelled one. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Okay. Kind of thinking on the fly. Huh. Did you hear me say ravages and you're like, I'll show him. No ravages. I'll show this guy. <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> but the important thing is, if you're getting 12 ball to prepare for ravages, because that's the most dangerous thing. That's a, a checkmate if you're not prepared for that. Which prepared for that just means a couple of stalkers and some shield batteries, and you're fine. Um, obviously, stalkers against links not ideal, and shield batteries not as good as cannons in a straight up bunch of lings spine attack, you'd just rather have cannons. So if you're wondering, oh god, I'm getting spine busted, what do I build? It's mostly cannons. A couple of shield batteries always add value, because obviously only so many cannons are going to fire at once, and shield batteries keep them alive, so... Um, don't go only cannons, but some shield batteries, fantastic. Um, and uh, just... Uh, just get away from the push if he's got spines. So we rebuild over here. This pylon is fantastic, because not only do you get this cool wall off and you can squeeze with the cannon out, your probe, but you also have all of this space, which is you not guaranteed. If you think about like building here, for example, you have this space and this space, and it's basically all the same space. Well, here it's like two very different areas. And even if you break this with spines, you still have this back area and you can keep going back, which is nice. Um, so yeah, I had no idea this was happening. It could have been two gas, a roach warren, three on each gas, bunch of ravages coming in. Could have been a nidus swarm, like first hundred gas into the into the um, lair, and then a nidus swarm. So could have been any of those things, but it ended up being the gasless thing. Uh, obviously, um, this is seventy-five minerals for the gas that wasn't used, so slightly more powerful attack may have made the difference. Who knows? I should have a third shield battery against ravages let alone this stuff. So definitely something to consider there is just three shield batteries, three cannons. That's the, the golden rule of defending pretty much anything that I can do. You should be able to get those buildings down and also be able to react to anything that they're doing. Nidus, um, proxies. It shouldn't cost you the game to build that much static. Anything more than that, and it will cost you the game to build that much static. So if you're there on your ladder, and I see this all the time, so I'm looking, you know who you are building seven cannons and ten shield batteries, you're opening yourself up to dying to a bunch of things. And if they do those things, you will die. Uh, but yeah, here come the links. Third shield battery here would have been crucial. Uh, this cannon probably doesn't want to be shooting that spine. Uh, links are doing insane DPS here. The surrounds are nice. Cannon should have been focused on the links. And also, you know how all the transfusers just went into that spine? If you shoot links with your cannons, then the transfusers aren't going to go down. You don't want to transfuse a link. So negate the transfuse. More DPS in the links anyway. Uh, you know, it's two shots to kill a link, so it's more worthwhile. So that was a big mistake for me, actually. I uh, could have made a big difference in this game if I had shot the links instead of the spine. I didn't even realize because I was too busy thinking about building shield batteries and cannons and whether whether I should keep this robo was the main question because I don't want this to finish and then I end up uh, losing it. Whereas if I build it at home, guaranteed war prison. Even if I survive here, guaranteed war prison. Grom, second gate before or after second gate? What? Second cannon before or after second gate? I build it uh, second cannon, then second gate. Time's up. Well, um... If you don't have a second cannon, I, I take it you mean when you're at the ramp over here, not this kind of game. You don't want a second gate at all. Um, well, okay, you are talking about that. If you go for three gate robo, uh, you can build your second gate quite quickly, but you still want a second cannon. A cannon at the front 
means the queens and any particularly fast spine won't just deny your front cannons, which is a GG. So keep that in mind. Yeah, again, this third shield battery makes all the difference in the world. Even after we lose all this stuff, the third shield battery comes in and saves the day. I wasn't sure. We rally this stalker. I, I think I'm worried about extra lings coming in. A couple of trans... Uh, what's it called? What are they called? Injects. One inject may have made a big difference here. Another huge wave of links could have come in and taken us out here. We see Apop floating 800 minerals, so like, obviously there could have been slightly more of this. But um, generally speaking, three shield batteries should hold this kind of stuff. So that's for the tutorial. Three shield batteries, don't forget it. I forgot it, you saw what happens. Barely held here. Barely, barely held. Uh, even if we lose all of this, the game isn't technically over. Opponents on 12 workers right now. Plus drones to make spines. Uh, plus lava to make wings, so it's not like the end of the game. We end up losing a ton of resources in the buildings, but it's not free. The opponent has to lose a lot as well. You can see it's actually even right now, but then all the, all, once the cannons are dead, there's shield batteries, pylons, gateway, all of that goes down for free. So we end up losing a ton of resources, but we're ahead in Ecos for the whole, probably about seven minutes by the time all of this is cleared up. So you can take and expand, or you can go for a three gate robo, maybe get a robo band for a Colossus in there, maybe build some shield batteries outside their base. It's up to you, but uh, something to consider about this kind of style. And that's why it's quite weak, is that even if it works, it's, it doesn't guarantee much. It doesn't guarantee too much. Um, yeah, so generally should be okay against this kind of stuff if you keep a cool head. So far I have three notes. One, first gate before first cannon, yes. Second cannon, then second gate, and mass expand is the way versus swarm first. Yes, all of those things are true. If you can get the gate before the cannon, some maps like atmospheres you can't squeeze out, so you don't get your gateway first. You have to build your cannon or your probe gets stuck, and that's terrible. So, yeah. Okay, Apop, I think you have to go, right? Yeah, I probably should. Thank you ever so much. Um, you'll be streaming in like two and a half hours, maybe? I clicked the wrong button. Anyways. I meant to say goodbye before I left. Heck. 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 Goodbye, Grimmy. This goodbye, is Mr. Pop. Pop, are you streaming in two and a half hours? I will be streaming in two hours and 23 minutes from now. Mm. Right on time. Okay, so guys, if you're around that time, obviously jump on in and check his stream out. You guys already know him, so you already know you should do that. But it's in two and a half hours, okay? Thanks, That's Kiwi. Me. Awesome. Fantastic. Let me Thank know you how, the guide, how the guide turns out. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, this is fantastic. For people that don't know how to do it or don't know how to do it well, this should be fantastic. We'll see what the awesome, feedback awesome. is. Yeah, Thanks. let me know if you need more help later on, man. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mr. Pop. Yes, indeed. Oh, one thing. Are you? Are we doing customs tonight or no? no uh, it depends on if I go to sleep. If I can hang in there, then I'll try and catch you for two <laughs> hours. Uh, otherwise, if, I, if I'm if i not around, I'm asleep. So forgive me, Father. All right. No problem, no problem. Thank All right, man. I'll catch you later. Have a good night, and have a good stream if G -g. I don't see you. GG. Tremendous fella. Upstanding character. And, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'll just see maybe if anyone messaged. I asked other Zergs to come around. Maybe Wazif, if he's streaming right now, I might ambush him, make it awkward for him to say no. No, he's, he agreed to it. He wanted to. Um... Nero's playing World of Warcraft, so I probably shouldn't ask him. Uh, who else? No, I, I think I've run out of Zerg friends. Uko says he'll help. He can't today. He's got business stuff, and next time could be Apop again. Could be Nero. Could be Wazif. Could be Uko. But I'll keep doing a couple of these videos, and we'll kind of get a good sense of things that Protoss can do and things that Zerg can do. This was like the bare bones. You know, build your pylon after your second probe comes out, rally the third one and build a forge. Go to the safety spot, build a pylon if you don't see a hatchery in the safety spot. Build two gateways if you can get away with it, that's pretty much a free win against Zerg. Um, yeah, that was the bare bones, people that don't really know how to do it. But there is a lot of tiny things that you can do and that Zerg can do that will mess this all up. We already kind of saw that when we got Apop to pull against the forward cannon on jack zergs just don't do that because they don't know to do that they don't think to do that it seems too easy like why would i get 
so much value from such a simple thing. The first drone being sent down um, to deal with the pylon as well, some things I just don't do. A lot of players, including high GMs like uh, Uko, you know, he's pretty good and he doesn't do that. Like he just lets me get up the gateway and the cannon for free. Gas gets down faster, Robo comes down much faster. Things end up much more sticky than they should be. Um, so lots of tiny things, which I will try and go over in future videos, but this is the bare bones, basic how to cannon Russian PVZ. It took me two and a half hours. That's fine. That's good. That's a reasonable length. People are going to watch it, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I think I'll call the stream there. I might stream again if I, as I say, if I get to play APOP later, if I don't fall asleep, then we'll do that. Oh, before I go, uh, Kiwi did have an interesting question about the um, drones being pulled on the ramp. How is your house going to burn down again? Are you in another fire danger zone? That's crazy. All right. Kiwi says, do you like Zerg pulling three to four drones at the beginning on the right now pylon of the three pylon wall? That's the one that's going to get cancelled, right? So no, I don't like that. If you're going to pull drones, it's on the one that has to be there to build the gateway and the um, cannon on the low ground. So that that's fine. And... You know, if Protoss keeps the other two pylons, then he's just wasting tons of money. So, yeah, I, I think there's value to... No, the one reaching the low ground. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, there's definitely value to that. Um, it's also good to have a drone there. Again, it's kind of like the, the other type of cannon rush on the low ground. It's, it's good to have a drone there just in case the opponent um, cancels the pylons too quickly and you can get on the low ground. Um, yeah, there's definitely room, there's definitely argument for that. There's also an argument for pulling all of your drones, or 12 of them, and attacking all three pylons. When the pylons get cancelled, you send everything to the low ground, because if the Protoss does something as simple as not building his gateway first and builds the cannon and then the gateway, that's actually, on almost every map, that's enough to kill the gateway. And then there's no gateway, there's no follow-up, um, and the cannon rush ends. And since we're walled into our main, there's no real macro, easy follow-up. Uh, Zerg's in a fantastic spot. However, if you build a gateway first, the gateway survives, the cannon comes up, you kill a bunch of drones, uh, 12 workers haven't been mining for that whole time, the game kind of ends there. So it's again a very small, unique situation. Yeah, I haven't seen Lone Wolf in a long time either. I, I, no one's said where he went, but I hope he's okay. Always gateway before forge. No, no, no. Always gateway before cannon on the low ground when you're doing a ramp cannon rush. Okay. Uh, gateway before forge is good when you're doing a gate forge cannon rush. That's a completely different type of cannon rush. It hits 30 seconds later, uh, plays out very differently, very tech heavy. You get a robo or a stargate out, very different. What if Zerg pulls workers? Yeah, yeah, that's we just yeah, that's that can work. And building your gateway wouldn't be possible. Well, you wall them out on their ramp, right? So he can't pull to the bottom of the ramp because there's a three pylon wall. If you don't get that wall up, you lose the game. So. Um, in Jag, I can't wall. What do you mean? This would be blind pull meds game. Yeah, if you know a cannon rush is coming and it's a forge first one that hits at 1 minute and at 1 minute 30 like a gate forge, then you can pull. 2,000 atmospheres where you can't get low ground from high ground violence. Oh yeah, you can't do a two gate on that, basically. The, the ramp is too long and there's no space for the stuff on the bottom. Yeah, you just can't do this build. Uh, that's why I started off with a cannon rush that you can do on every map. Um, you can go into a, it's very safe. You can go into a gate robo every time very safely. You can deal with any reaction that the Zerg has. It's much more micro intensive and there's room to mess up. But if you stick with the build and play it out enough times, you don't make mistakes and you win the game all the time. Where's the YouTube video? Uh, well, this is it. <laughs> You're in it, Hup. You're in it. Your chat messages are being shown in the YouTube video. It's coming. Yeah, I'll upload this VOD to YouTube, and this will be the YouTube video. Yeah. I can't upload it until then. Oh, she... Up, are you going to start streaming? I need someone to raid. Pig is playing Terran to GM, so that's who I'll host if no one else... Dan, are you going to start streaming? Hello, by the way, Dan. Not tonight. Is Nina streaming? I didn't see her. Oh, she said goodnight. Oh, goodnight, Nina. 
me reading chat as always. I'll ditch if they evacuate me. I mean, I don't understand. You said that there was a fire. Now you're being evacuated. Oh, I see. You mean you'll stream, and if there's a fire that's going to threaten your life, you have to evacuate. Jesus Christ, Huff. You live a very exciting life. Here in England, it's like, oh, rain. Rain can mess up the roads, apparently. It can cause big cracks in there because of something under the thing. That's as exciting as it gets here. We have a very strong gust of wind that knocks over the chairs in the garden, which we leave out because we're like, <laughs> no wind is coming from my garden chairs. Uh, is that what we call it? Exciting? I mean, horrifying... Uh, Terrifying things that end in eyeing. Uh, those as well. But exciting is also one. It's a it's a positive twist, Dan. I like to keep things positive, even when we're talking about a house fire that can kill our precious hub. I know. I, I get it. I get it. I get what you're saying, but I'm trying to keep things on a light note here. Um, you know, fire death. That's horrible. Bringing up supply. Positive twist. Wow, Grim. <laughs> it would make a fire stream for sure. Wow, a pun about a horrifying situation, Dan. That's too far. Making light of my situation, how dare you. I do profoundly apologize. Nina, are you going to stream? I think, I think we're hosting Fire Sun Hub. That's crazy, though. All right, so we'll wait for Hub to fire up his stream. Hello, Buckstar. Do we have any other questions? There's a safety spot on 2K with gate before cannon, by the way. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, I see where you can squeeze out. Interesting. Not the one that I use at the minerals, I take it. I think you said safety spot, right? Murdering scabs in Tarkov. We start it, okay? Awesome. Is there a safety spot on Beckett versus 12 pool? Um, yeah, in the in the natural, in the base of the natural. There's a three panel wall. It does the job. Um, Beckett is obviously a very special map with its three second rush distance. I don't know how it plays out if the wings just go straight across the map and just be like, hey, I'm at your, at your base, and it's 10 seconds after I was at my base. Not only is it a short map, it has speed zones, so, you know, go figure. So I don't know, if you build a gateway placeholder, will it just die? Will the cannon be enough? I don't like Beckett for Forge First. In fact, Jag is the only good map forge first against the 12 pool in my opinion every other map and you're open to uh, a lot of trouble with drone link pool and also uh 12 pool ravager i think that very difficult to deal with on those maps i love beckett versus 12 pool. well see kiwi is is enjoying it yeah, there's definitely a spot right like there's definitely something you can do in the natural there If the 12 pool drone pool, yeah, I mean, 12 pool drone pool is another special thing. And if you just have a three pile on wall with no uh, re walling available, no low ground like some maps have, uh, have in the past allowed, I don't think there's any maps in this pool. Um, yeah, then that can be trouble. Your safety spots are even further away from the natural. Okay. Well, I mean, there's obviously, it's like when you, um, before when uh, Game Time used to stream, I think every day, he would start the game with a 12 pool and like five drones looking all around the map and we would end up building our safety spot in the middle of the map and it would work out where it shouldn't because he's got so many drones not mining on top of having a 12 pool where he doesn't have any drones anyway so yeah it, it kind of gets to that but generally a, a 12 pool drone pool feels terrible because as i say they have no eco and then they pull their drones it feels very risky even if it works are they in an amazing position because you, you can continue making probes when you see it. You can get into your tech and expand, probably. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's one of those things that it, it happens so rarely that I don't really think about it. Okay, Kiwi, thanks. Kiwi, was there another question that I missed from you? Let me scroll up. Do -do -do. 
It's so cheap, forces low ground pylon, delays the high ground a lot. When I helped Zergs, I was helping to do it, instantly improves by a ton. Ah, yeah, okay, that was about the um, pulling on the first pylon, denying the high ground. Um, yeah, it does force a low ground pylon, um, but that's not terrible to have. And you can go into gate robo, which is what I prefer doing anyway, to be honest. Against an extremely good bio player, like Scarlet or Bly. I'd prefer to go Gate Robo than have to play against their Ravager versus Stalker Shield battery, which is crazy because against almost anyone, you're like, this is the best, this is a free win. But against perfect Biles and perfect Ravager Micro, it actually feels kind of bad. Um, but those players are few and far between, so I don't even worry too much about that. Um, but for a lower level player, the fact that you have to go Gate Robo and then do Wall Prism Micro, that is definitely favoring the Zerg. Because it's easier to bile and pull away ravages than it is to do uh, wall prism pickups, not lose the prism to the queens, not lose the prism to the biles, dodge projectiles from the ravages, and in between get up your shield batteries, cannons, certain extra base, and scouting, and dealing with Nidus one, and all of that stuff. So I, I perhaps agree with you, Kiwi. Um, I agree with you about. Or a lower level player you could try that play but then i don't know about how i will give advice like that it's probably important to just tell them this won't work as you get better i think it's not a good thing to do against someone that's comfortable from playing from that low ground pushing up anyway because as i say it's a perfectly legitimate way to play to just start on the low ground like on 2k atmo um and just play from there it's just absolutely fine to do that uh, you did say versus swarm host the important part is not stay on one base and spend everything to try to keep the proxy swarm host is slow and expensive just expand and get another game plan uh, i agree with you except for the part where you said uh spend everything to try to keep the proxy that sounds like you're building more shield batteries and more cannons which is just not the right play like you're, you're going to lose cannon shield battery at a much faster rate than uh you can build them and and gain value from like the time that you'll gain from an extra six shield batteries and 10 cannons is not worth expanding again like two nexuses would be better than having your proxy for a bit longer especially since the unit set that you want isn't robo stuff like having a prism of two immortals that and some maybe two observers one observer those are the things that you need from that robo having more robo production even a colossus isn't what you need you need uh you know warp gate twilight uh blink charge maybe plus one, that kind of stuff. So I, I, I wouldn't recommend saying that to people because I don't think that's what you meant. You probably just meant hang around the proxy and try and slow the, the swarm host barrage down. But generally you want to take your resources and put them all over the map and have units all over the map to deny denitises and have spotting pylons and, and nexuses and that kind of stuff. Do -do -do. How about four cannons and two shield batteries, JPEX asked. I would actually say no. Always have three shield batteries because four cannons is good against the Ling Spine stuff. It would be better than four and three cannons and three shield batteries. But if they go Ravages, which is the main threat, you're going to want shield batteries. And you're going to want four or five of them if you realize it's going to be a hardcore Ravager Bile Sesh instead of uh, three Ravages into an Idus. So three is the golden number for sure. Kiwi doesn't barcode so 80% of games versus metagamers. Yeah, this is true. I, I don't enjoy playing those games, especially now that I have two other styles that I really enjoy in PvZ. So I don't really... I don't recommend that, Kiwi. You should play on a name that isn't your own one because, well, I mean, if you've resigned yourself to never doing anything else, then I guess that's fine. All right, now I've scrolled back down. You guys have said stuff that I haven't read. Oh my goodness, this streaming thing is endless. I read stuff, and by the time I'm finished, you guys have said more stuff. Holy heck. Why is the default to use two probes for a cannon rush? I'm a trash tier and only use one. Uh, King Blizzard, so you can do one. When I started off cannon rushing, I was like, that's a waste. I'm, I'm going to have one. And you end up in a lot of situations where you would just lose the game because you don't have the second one. And that's the long and short of it, right? You, you don't want to have to lose the game because you lose a probe. That could be against a 12 pool, for example, is it two links that follow the probe. That's a dead probe. You, you're not going to save that probe if there's two Zerglings on it, right? Um, 
against uh, a drone pool as well, oftentimes your probe gets stuck in between buildings and then you're at the situation where you neither can cancel the building and let the lings or drones come in or you uh, get the probe stuck there and he's useless, he's basically dead, he can't actually build anything more. So the second probe is just over the course of the situation, you just want to, um, you want to have a backup, that's all it is. King Blizzard. Mercy versus no hatch, you need to scout main at the same time as you make building at proxy, so you need two probes. Yeah, that's true. Even in a, a hatch first, as we saw in the APOP games that we just played, having another hatchery on the map is a big deal. And if you don't know about it, you don't know, for example, to build a cannon at your uh, main ramp, and you don't know that they could be sitting defensively and droning that hatchery. Because if you know there's another hatchery on the map, you know that at the very least they've invested that, 350 minerals in effect. Um, you know, that's three less spine crawlers or two less spine crawlers or uh, a couple of less units. You know, he's posturing defensively and that the hatchery is some value away from the main. So the opponent will play defensively rather than hardcore one base all in your, your proxy. So it's very useful information. Um, the, the cost of not mining with that probe is outweighed greatly by the, the value that you get from reacting to what that probe sees or doesn't see. If you see there's no hatchery, that's also good information. Honk, honk, honk. Oh, did you say don't try to hold the proxy? Oh, well, then I'm a potato, Kiwi. <laughs> I can't read. Nice. This was a very educational and professional stream. When do we go back to memes? I mean, this is, you, you know, this is only going to happen once every year, an educational stream. You know it. It's just not going to happen every day. But you can learn by watching me be a potato on ladder. That's good too, no? Don't let the memes be dreams. What's up, Soul Steel? Grimmy, are you going to university? I've been. I've got my law degree, and now I'm just sitting at home in fun employment streaming. Uh, drop 20 gifted subs. Yes, makes sense. I usually have to cancel if trap. Thank you. There we go, King Blizzard. Zero memeing around here, please. Apop Stepsis. I think that's got to be, it's got to be Soul Steel or Kata that's on Apop Stepsis. Kata loves his names and, and wordplay, so I have a feeling it's Kata, but it could be Soul. I don't know. The coincidence that Soul and Apop Stepsis arrive at the same time is too strong. Normal stream cadence then once a year. That's right. This is it. See you guys next year. 2022. Year of even stronger COVID variants. Calling it. Thought it was your old. No, it's not. I literally I'm playing games against Apop whilst Apop Stepsis, Apop Stepbro, uh, Apop Stepdad. They're all chatting. It can't be me unless I'm sharing it. Like, oh well, that would be clever. We all have access to them, so you, it's actually several people. That'll that's how we're doing it. Smarts. Alright guys, I'm going to host up the mighty Hupsayer, who, uh, victim of the Fire Nation. Little avatar meme in his title. Love it. So I'm going to host Hup. If he leaves suddenly, it's because he's evacuating because a fire is going to claim his possessions. And if not for the evacuation, his life. So very exciting stuff. Donate and subscribe to Hup. You may have to relocate again. We actually, he already did this, right? I, you think I'm joking? His whole town, uh, the town of Paradise in Chico, I think. Not to dox anyone, but that town doesn't exist anymore. That whole thing went and he had to, he barely escaped. His neighbor woke him up, I think. He was sleeping as this thing was ravaging his town and he managed to get out. And uh, that's just mental. So we already did this once. I really hope this doesn't happen to the poor guy again. Not that I hoped it happened the first time. I'm going to the gym and train my COVID variants. They will be stronger than ever. Near Chico. Okay, good. Oh, Chico is where he went to after. Paradise was, I guess, somewhere else. I don't know. Soul Steel says, hmm, it's not me. I don't have an account called A-Stop, A-Pop Stepsis. Sladvik Snov Grimi. Oh, Spokuni Ochi. Sweet, sweet dreams to you too, King Blizzard, I'm guessing. Uh, all right, Hapsayer. Let's go. Spell his name right. Done. Finished.
Two and a two hours forty five minutes. What a stream! This guy and the endurance. It's amazing. How could he stream? No one knows how he streams this long. Can't believe it. Got to keep keep donating so I get enough cocaine to keep these long streams going, guys. Insane. I don't know how he does it. Insane. I think that might be a record. I'll check with that guy that did fifty day streams in a row. But all right, guys. Say hi to Hub. If you see any fire in the background, this is not a drill. At Hub, there is a fire in the background. Okay? You could save a life. Maybe more, I don't know. You might have a dog or something. Honk say, that's right. But yeah, be good. Behave, guys. I don't want Hub thinking that we have a rowdy bunch here. We're a civilized tribe. Well, I'll see you guys soon. Good. All right. So YouTube. Hello. I've raided so only you guys can see this now. Uh, I hope that was useful. Ask for any uh, clarifications or situational things. I will answer in the YouTube comments. Give it a like and that's it. I think there's something about a bell. I'm not really big on YouTube, but I think there's something about a bell. Uh, so click the bell or something. You can tell how many, how many bells I'm clicking on other people that ask me to, but ignore that and, and do the thing. Yeah, cool. I'll see you guys later.